Okay, gentlemen, we'll pick back up where we left off last night, and uh, that's in the general fund, and I believe we should be starting with public works. Mike, I'll turn that over to you if you've got anything you want to share before then. If not, uh, it's at your pleasure, sir. Mike muted. No, sir. We'll give it a second and see if he's got connection issues. Mr. Mayor, I apologize. I'm not sure what my problem with my phone is. I'm over here in Shannon's office. Um, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Loud and clear. Okay. I'll try yeah. to get back on in a minute. We'll be moving to page 21 in your budget workbook. Um, that's uh, general maintenance, which has also been referred to as appearance from time to time. Uh, Lenny Branch will handle that along with the next three departments following that. Lenny, are you... Prepared? Oh, yes, sir. I'm here. All right. You go ahead and start with general maintenance, please. Uh, okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, uh, thank you, Council. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, present the Public Works budget to you guys. Um, as the manager just said, the Public Works Department consists of four divisions. We have a total of 26 employees within those four divisions. Right now, we'll be discussing general maintenance uh, on page 21. I'll give everybody a a second just to make sure everybody's there. Okay. Um, in general maintenance, uh, we have five total employees in this division. Uh, that does include me, the director of the department, and, and four other uh, employees. The salary line reflects the salaries of, of those five employees. Um, and over time, uh, we're asking for the same that we did have last year. We're asking for $2,000. We're well within that amount this year, thank God, because uh, these guys do put out a lot of salt and things such as that during snow and events after hours, and this year we just didn't have that uh, to hit us, which was a blessing. Uh, FICA, group insurance and retirement are uh, out of my control. They just reflect the salaries that, uh, that we just discussed. Um, training and education, we're asking for the same amount. This line basically is for those guys that wish to uh, get their um, pesticide license and and, uh, um, and do con ed classes. Um, we had them scheduled, and obviously the COVID-19 kind of set that back. We're hoping that we can get them in and get some hours before uh, the end of the budget year this year. Um, temporary labor, um, same amount as last year, 8,000. Uh, this, this allows us to get an extra employee for 12 weeks, and I've got it mapped to, we start them from July to September, um, which is through the, pretty much the growing season, um, and uh, get those guys some help, much needed help that they need, because they maintain six cemeteries, a lot of beds and parking lots and things such as that, and they need the extra help. Um, so that's a, that's a blessing in that department. Um, telephone, same amount as last year. That does uh, include uh, uh, my cell phone and the uh, phones we have in the office. Um, utility line, um, 30, excuse me, 1300. We're still asking for the same amount. We're well within that amount. It seems to be working, and uh, I don't see any need of changing or increasing. Um, equipment and maintenance, uh, we're asking for the same amount as well. Um, that does in, include the equipment that they have that they, they perform day-to-day -day tasks with, but it also includes HVACs, uh, maintenance at the uh, town hall and at the public works facility. Um, we shouldn't have any problems staying within that budget restraint as well. Um, fuel, just like everybody else, um, we're holding that good, and with prices down, I see no need to increase that. I actually may be able to de decrease it if this thing keeps going on like
like it is, but we should still stay, you know, well within that mark. Um, vehicle maintenance and supplies, I've got 2,500 in there. We were graciously given a, a new vehicle, so I don't see any any maintenance that should be under warranty, but it's just there to cover if we have to buy, you know, tires or, you know, anything. Um, if not, that, that, that money will remain in that line. Um, supplies and operations, um, we're still at, we're asking for the same amount as last year. We should be well within that amount. Um, that that covers a, a vast array of things such as mulch and uh, the things that guys need. Uh, this is pretty much a catch-all line, like in everybody else's budget. But we should be well within that mark and stay uh, in 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 good shape there. Um, Riverside uh, expansion. I'm sorry, my glasses. I got different glasses and and okay. Riverside uh, Cemetery. Reimbursement. This is basically a pass-through um, account, and and what it is when we collect sales for uh, Leo Daltrey and Alan Wellens' uh, Riverside Extension, we get the money and then it passes through back to the owners. Um, we're asking for twenty thousand. We were way over budget this year, uh, but again, it doesn't cost us any money. The thirty thousand dollars was a purchase by one of the owners where he bought several lots for his family and uh, it was like a thirty thousand dollar purchase so that's why you know i'm projecting forty one thousand two hundred fifty in that line uh, but twenty thousand should be well enough as far as sales goes there um, grave opening fees um, this is a, a semi revenue um, gaining line so if we do go over it's good um, we have a contractor that opens and close graves for us um, uh, manage the cemeteries and sales, so you know we have to have the open and closings. They charge us five hundred twenty-five dollars. Our charge is seven hundred, so it's a hundred seventy-five dollars uh, revenue that comes in every time uh, we have an open and closing. And this has been the same amount for years. We have not went up or or anything in that line. Um, uh, turn to page to twenty-two. Uh, tree trimming. This the tree trimming is is mainly for hazardous trees. We have a lot of hazardous trees in Smithfield and we have to identify them because uh, some of them are well over 100 years old oak trees and that's pretty much their lifespan. Um, I think Clayton Aaron done a study on it and uh, Perry kind of reiterated uh, when he was on council that you know we have a lot of these older trees here in town. So I've already got two identified that has to come down in July. Um, and I'm sure we'll have a couple of more that will be identified as well uh, along the way in the budget. Um, in the appearance commission uh, line, which is 3440, we're asking for the same amount. Um, those ladies do a tremendous amount of work. Um, I, I actually sat in on the uh, um, commission, and I think uh, David Stevens does too as well. Um, he can he can contest that these guys, are, these girls are hard at it all the time. They've done a lot of projects. They're actually in partnership with Parks and Rec uh, in the um, shade structures at the boat ramp uh, in this this budget year and next year. They've they've got a lot more projects that they want to work on. This this helps the appearance of the town as a whole. Um, uh, community garden. This is the only line that I'm looking at trying to increase. Um, this is the community garden that uh, the ladies volunteer time in. Uh, they have a $2,000 budget. I'm asking for $3,000 just to increase $1,000 to help cover the materials and things that they need, like hand tools or or what have you, out there. Um, we just installed grapevines for uh, Brandy and and her helpers and um, uh, uh, just. They they do a lot. I mean, if you hadn't been out there, you know, go by and look at it. Those, those ladies have flipped that place, and 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 it's just it's wonderful to see. Um, so that, I'm asking for a thousand dollar increase there to help cover those 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 expenses. Um, uh, uniform line, uh, thirty five hundred dollars is the same as last year. That covers all the uniforms for the employees, at safety shoes, and things such as that. Um, service service contracts. You'll notice eleven thousand dollar savings. Um, we actually, I put out for bid um, all of the town's contracts this year. I mean, everything, HVAC, grain, grounds maintenance, um, uh, uh, what am I leaving out? Grounds maintenance, lawn care, HVAC, uh, cleaning contract, everything was put out. And when we did that, um, we actually saved $11,000 from last year. Um, so that was a big savings for, for the department. 
and for the town as a whole. In capital outlay um, this year, um, I'm requesting to re re replace a mower uh, in in the in the uh, cemeteries the guys cut with a zero turn. Uh, that's ten thousand. Uh, excuse me, thirteen thousand dollars. And uh, Christmas decorations. I'm asking for ten thousand uh, dollars. And what I would like to do is is kind of like the same thing I done uh, as in East Smithfield. Uh, a couple of years ago, we, we replaced some of the older angels and put candy canes in as you're coming in on the east side of town on that major uh, corridor. I would like to do the same thing on the west side. I would like to you know replace some of those coming into West Smithfield and you know gradually try to replace those angels out. Um, they're really expensive. I mean, we're looking at a thousand dollars close uh, per so. Uh, uh, $10,000, we, we possibly could get nine uh, additions. Um, I'm looking at the tip and hat uh, snow, snowmen, I think it was. It is. But uh, that's something that I want to talk with. It. If the council uh, deems that, um, you know, it's okay to, to get up with the parents commission and get ideas and, and, and see what, you know, people would like. But the tip and hat snowmen, I've seen them in other towns, and they look really well. Um, that's pretty much it I have for... Um, uh, the general maintenance uh, budget, and I'll answer any questions anybody may have. Uh, I just had one accounting question. Yes, sir. Uh, so, uh, on the Riverside Cemetery expansion, you said it's a pass through basically, it comes in and goes out. So, this is where it's going out, so where do we count it going in? Councilman, can you hear me? I can, yes. Okay, good. I got my phone working again then. Um, there's a revenue line that uh, corresponds with that amount. I'll need a minute to find it, but it's on page one, I believe, of your budget book. Um. Well, actually, it's on page two. About halfway down, you'll see Cemetery Riverside Extension lot sales, twenty thousand dollars. Thank you. I just I didn't I just looked over it. I didn't see it. That's all I was trying to find it. So yep. Okay. Thank you. Mhm. Mm so so Mike or, or Lenny, why we're on that subject? Since it is a pass through, do we? How does that work? Do we collect just for the benefit of everyone on the council? Do we collect any type of administrative fee, or how how exactly does that process work for Riverside expansion? I'm going to ask our finance director to answer that question for you. Okay. Um, council, Mayor, um, the Riverside is 100% pass through. Um, there is no um, percentage held aside for administrative fees. Okay. So we're, what do we, I guess we get the 175 from from lot opening, right, from grave openings, but then we, we're paying to have the grass cut. Did we put the lights in as well? Are we responsible for lighting? I, mean, I think there's some accent lighting there, flagpole or whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, sir. We we do. We pay we pay for the electricity out there and and the maintenance in the cemetery. Uh, I think the agreement, Mayor, was when when Leo and them uh, bought the property, Leo and Allen, and it may have been another partner. I'm not really sure. Um, but that the the consensus were that they were going to they buy the property, clean it up, you know, kind of mimic the same as the original cemetery across the street with the stone wall and everything. And once they've recouped their money as far as their investment into the property, then they turn it over to the town, and then the town uh, starts uh, getting revenue off of the uh, lot sales at that point. Gotcha. I think, and that, I that's think the, what – go ahead, I'm sorry. Excuse me. I, I think the contract did go before the council a year or two ago, um, not really sure to date, and an extension was granted to – uh, Leo Daltrey and Alan Williams at that time uh, because they have not uh, recouped their money at that point. So, Yeah, it did. I, I remember, but I just couldn't remember all the details regarding that. So, mm -hmm. okay. And, Mayor, I'm not sure if I understood you um, correctly, but I thought I heard you say 175 for grave opening 
the town does get, but it's seven hundred dollars per gray vote. Yeah, yeah but don't we, we but we but we have to pay the contractor, right? A portion of that, right? That is correct. We pay them five hundred twenty five dollars. Okay. I thought I heard, yeah, I thought I heard we clear one seventy five. Okay. My apologies. Yes, sir, that is correct, Mayor. So Lenny, one thing I had just, just also another benefit of me and maybe for the council as well, um, just because I don't remember all the details on the community garden. I think it's an excellent project. It look, it's looking great over there. Um, but how, how does that work? I know they've got a budget of 3000 I assume that is to buy plants, uh, whatever, water to do the, the beddings and so forth. But how does that – How how is that – do you guys, does your department go out and purchase this, or how is that money controlled, I guess? That, Mayor, that money, and I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, I'm, I'm, excuse me, Manager, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you were probably getting ready to step in, but I, I can I can help you out there. Um, before any purchase is made, uh, Mayor, they have to put in a request to the manager, and he has to approve the purchase. Um, so... Um, and then, then the budget is, is managed through me. Mike sends an email and says that he's authorized this. He signs off on it. And that point, you know, we we make sure that that is bought for that project and in the in the community garden. So it is managed by basically the ma the manager. Gotcha. And then, and and Lenny or or Mike, if you know, as far as the actual produce, that's that you know, I know they have the boxes out there and so forth. But do you know how? Can you give just a couple bullet pointed update, just really quick uh, as far as how that process works? If you know, um, you know, as far as you know, when they get their crop in, do they put it all in the boxes for the community? Does some of it go to a shelter or or what? Do we do you know any of those specifics, Lenny? Uh, I do not, Mayor. Um... Mike may know, but I do not. Yeah, I, I can answer that question for the most part. Um, as the uh, produce becomes available, um, it's all put into boxes. We do have some people that will show up um, while uh, while they are actually working there and ask if they can can pick off the vine, and if the stuff is ready, then they're allowed to do that. Um, anything extra we make available to any of the food pantries that might want it, but it's it's all perishable, so it has to go pretty quick. But as a rule, there's we don't see that produce being left in the boxes or seeing a whole lot of extra. It's it's usually picked pretty quickly. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Thank you. And then I just had one other question uh, for Lenny. As far as the Christmas decorations, you mentioned replacing the angels. Um, are they are they just at a state where they can't be repaired, or we have a lot of them that are that are inoperable, <laughs> or, 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 or or why are we? I guess why are we changing those out? I guess. Well, they're to be honest with you, Mayor. Are, are they operable? Yes, sir. They're, they're over twenty years old, though. Um, and uh, I was just looking at trying to add, you know, something different uh, into the decorations. I, I ask a lot. Now, you know, I, I fully understand, um, but it, it, it just makes the town look so much better. I mean, I, I have a place at Emerald, and I go through there all the time at Christmas, and I, I see there different things and look at it, and I just think it's, you know, it just looks so so good, and, and I get I get ideas like that. Um, but as far as the, are the angels in in pretty good shape yes sir but we put up 114 of them <laughs> and a majority of them are on the west side as you're coming in because it's such a long corridor coming in i was just wanting to break it a little bit as you're coming in just to add a you know a little different uh christmas cheer to everybody got gotcha okay all right thank you sir any other questions for for lenny on this portion Lenny, if if you could, could you just take a minute and elaborate on the staff and the appearance and and what they do, um, how many people you actually have out there, and how yes, often sir. they hold off uh, to do sanitation oh, work? Oh, yeah. yes, sir, yes, sir. Uh, and, and public works, I mean, uh, 
sanitation is, is the backbone because it's an everyday route. I mean, we have four routes a day, um, and, and a lot of times what we have to do in, in the street division and in the um, uh, general the general maintenance division is we have to utilize uh, some of the employees from time to time. Um, and, and it kind of sets us back when we do that, but we have to, you know, you have to prioritize that. Pro, excuse me, prioritize things. And the sanitation guys do help out on Wednesdays, which is a non-route day, and they'll get out and help us cut grass. And, you know, you'll see them out there, and, and we're trying. I mean, it's it's very difficult when you talk about 12.2 12 square miles and you've actually got three employees that are cutting right-of-ways and, and, uh, and things such as that. So we try to do everything we can as far as to, you know, keep those things uh, um uh, looking presentable. I um, mean, uh, we're we're like uh, any other department. We we could be a lot better, and and we're implementing things to try to correct that. But um, what these guys primarily do uh, is these guys cut six cemeteries. Um, they cut the Brogdon Road substation. Um, we cut the community garden. They cut the Pine Acres uh, entrance way. Uh, they cut. Um, Let's see, the library, the town-owned parking lots, which is the one beside Avon, behind the old belts where the county occupies. But they cut the parking lot beside Twisted Fork, uh, the police department, town hall, public works. They cut Bridge Street in Johnston uh, and 3rd Street. Um, they do all the welcome signs. They do the Save-A-Lot bid, which, you know, some of you guys not... Y'all probably do. Everybody here has been living in Smithfield all your life. Uh, but that's actually, I call it Save a Lot Bed, but it's actually the bed there at Brogdon Road and uh, Broadleaf Boulevard. Um, we all, they also cut the retention pond, uh, and these guys do uh, Christmas decorations every year, which is a big, big display. They actually have to start uh, in, in October the 1st changing bulbs, and, and there's a lot of groundwork in it. Um, they also do... Um, uh, facility maintenance tasks such as changing bulbs in into facilities and minor painting and things such as that and uh they also are responsible for east market uh from the underpass um from where the contractor stops at to the waffle house um that's primarily what they do but in between that we do have to pull them off to to help out you know in other other divisions so do they also handle the FEMA lots as well as the lots that the code enforcement officer asked them to mow? No, sir. They 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 don't do that. Um, they actually that falls within the street guys. Or the three uh, employees in the street department do that. Okay. Thanks. So, Lenny, one more question. I'm I'm sorry. I meant to ask this earlier. Under supplies and operations, it looks like that line item. Is the same at 31.6, but in the narrative, it says um, 16.4 for supplies and appearance, and then it's got IE or in parentheses it says add 7,500 for additional mulch, but that's not an that, addition for this year, correct? No, 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 sir. And that's actually my fault, and I apologize. The manager actually got on us about that. Um, uh, I left that in. That was that was what we added in to actually have to get extra mulch for. You know the the beds and stuff that's been added um, um, through the past couple of years um, and on the right of ways coming into major corridors, the traffic islands on Third Street in front of Carroll's Pharmacy. That that's to to try to keep those freshed up as much as we can. That was put in a couple of years ago, and it should have been taken yeah. out. So. Yeah, no problem. My my question is 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 do we feel like we're we have enough to maintain those properly? Um, and I just, you know, I, I see you're talking about the beds that have been added um, along Highway 70 uh, going towards the pottery out in front of the community college. And, and do we also have to maintain the ones on 70 West that were added by the state a few years ago? No, no, sir. Th those beds uh, in between... Uh, Wilson Earl Blackman's old store. So I would say the west side of Noose River Bridge to 210 Highway. Well, excuse me, it'd actually be Wilson Mills Highway because there's a there's a little area that goes that way. That is maintained by the contractor. That's uh, in a right of way contract. We don't do those, um, but all the new welcome signs and all uh, like town facilities such as town hall. Uh, we we do police. I'm not like, police department, fire department. 
both both stations of the fire department um so they they have a lot of mulch they have to put out and uh um they do a pretty good job with it too i, I think it looks really good yeah i'm just wondering i'm just curious so is now just that for my clarification does this line item include the 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 newer areas that were added um like in front of Johnston Community College from the bridge, you know, on, or is that also maintained by the contractor? I'm sorry, no, no, you may have that, said that, but I missed it. No, that, yeah, that that does include that. Okay. All right. And you feel like the, what we're budgeting is enough? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, I, I, I do. I, I, it, it, it gives us a chance to get a thicker layer of mulch in that, that, and that lasts. I mean, when you go in there and you try to sprinkle coat it, it looks really good because it's stained. But after a while, I mean, the weeds are going to come through, so we're constantly spraying and weed eating. We want them to look really good. I mean, East Smithfield is, is, is a major, major corridor coming in. I mean, that's where a lot of our businesses are. We see a lot of people coming off 95. We want it to look good. So if we could get a thicker layer in there like like we did, uh, I, I feel like it would be enough. Okay. All right. All right. That, that was really what I was wondering because I know we did add a few years ago for that, and now after we've gone through a couple of seasons, you know, I just wanted to get your input as do we think that what we have budgeted is enough to properly maintain those? And it sounds like it is. Yeah, yes, sir. I mean, it, it, and like, like I said, we we upped that line. I think it was last year, and the mayor, the manager, could correct me, but we did up that line because of that very thing. Is because, you know, we just didn't have enough mulch to be able to service all the beds and everything that we had. Um, so. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Any other questions for? Uh General maintenance. Okay, we can move on to page 23 for the street department. Um, the only item not included in this uh, this budget was a mini excavator at ninety thousand dollars. There is a uh, error that we've already located in the salaries and wages line. Um, if you could pencil in the amount there at 158,540, 158,540 instead of the 1658. Um, when we redid our math, we really couldn't figure out where that 1658 came from. So that also changes the FICA from uh, 126 to 122, 12,200. Lenny, if you want to go ahead. Oh yes, sir. Thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Scott. Um, in the street department, we have a total of four employees. Uh, in that four employees is included uh, um, the administrative support uh, specialist, the secretary in public works. She does an outstanding job uh, here, keeping up records and, and and things such as that. But then the other three employees are the operators and the and, and the guys out in the field doing the work. Um, in the overtime, uh, we're asking for the same amount as we did last year. Uh, we're well within that line. These guys are the ones that actually go out and scrape the roads, and if trees fall and uh, the utility department's in a bind because they can't get to their power lines, I mean, these are the guys that go out, the first initial group, that go out and, and cut these things uh, uh, up and get them open uh, so so we can get the power back on or, or the utility department can get the power back on. So luckily this year we haven't had a lot, so we're going to be well within that mark. I feel like uh, through historical, historically the $4,000 is going to be adequate, so I think we're, we're, we're good there. FICA, group insurance, retirement, all those things are out of, out of my control. They're, they're controlled by the salary. Um, telephone, we're at the same exact amount that we're uh, we're at last year. Um, uh, utilities, same amount. We should be well within that line with no problems. Uh, maintenance and repair to equipment, um, we're asking for the same amount. Uh, that that's for the backhoes and all those things. And when they break down, I mean they're just like in that sanitation department. I mean it's not like my little stuff. It breaks down a $200 carburetor or something like that with my landscape business. It, this is, when it breaks down, I mean, it's thousands. It's like open, owning a boat. I mean, it, you just throw another $1,000 to it. So uh, that's what that equipment maintenance line is for. 
um, professional fees. We're not asking for any because we utilize Bill, the the town contracted engineer. Um, so we're not asking for any any money there in that line. Fuel, we're going to be well within our budget amount. Uh, I foresee, like I said, uh, there being savings in, in that line for everybody. Um, not really sure. Police department, they do a lot of traveling, but. Uh, on the road patrolling, but I think everybody else pretty much will, will be right in line. <coughs> and uh, that's no disrespect to Keith. I mean, it, those guys have to stay on the road. Um, vehicle supplies and maintenance, 7,500. We're going to be well within that. I just went historically. I mean, the council great gave us a new truck. I mean, we, we bought a new truck this year. Those guys have out there. I don't foresee any problems coming with that vehicle, but we do have a few other vehicles that's older that snow plows are hooked up to and, and some of the um, uh, flatbeds they use uh, when they're out in the field having to haul um, stuff off of work zones and, and things such as that. Um, in the supplies and, and operation line, we're asking for the same same amount of money. I foresee us coming in well under budget this year, and the reason for us coming well under budget this year, my projected numbers, I think it's actually going to even be cheaper than that. It's because we didn't have to buy a lot of salt this year. We didn't have to buy uh, a, a lot of things in preparation for those ice storms and snowstorms that we normally get. I mean, we were lucky this year we didn't have a lot of that. So there would be a savings in that line, but uh, stuff like that so falls in that supply and, and operation line, and I feel confident that we should be well within that, that mark. Um, in drainage, uh, this is a repair line, uh, 24000 is the same amount that we, we had last year. I'm looking at increasing it. Um, that also does include, if you look in the tri uh, Triangle J uh, Clean Water uh, Education Partnership, um, we, we're, uh, we're members there, and, and that costs us. $2,550 for that, but that's more of educational purposes. When you see those commercials on TV and they're talking about fertilizers and don't don't over fertilize your yard because it gets into the storm water and you know things such as that. Um, uh, that, that covers uh, that line in in that. Um, on page 24, um, street lighting. Uh, uh, we're going to be well within that budget. Um, I see in the next few years as subdivisions come in and things such as like that, we'll probably have to look at maybe increasing that because, you know, utility poles will be added at that point, and, and uh, we have to cover in the street department a portion of uh, the electrical um, bills in town. Uh, not all of it is paid through the utility department, and I think that's a statute that we have to do that. So. Um, I'm basically responsible for covering those things. Um, some of the street lights are like 210 Highway coming into town is lit up West Smithfield and um, uh, your parking lots and things such as that um, comes out of my line um, in, in our department. Um, uniforms, $2,600, the same amount as, as last year. Um, that does cover just all the uniforms that these guys need and their safety shoes that they're required to have um, every year. Um, sidewalk uh, repair line, which is the 7300. This is an emergency request line because we do have sidewalk money in the power bill line. But you know, going with this, because we did actually spend $9,180 out of that line in, in the fiscal year 19, and that was because of emergency repairs that happened it was stuff that we didn't foresee. If it was a trip or fall, we had to go in and rip up a bunch of areas and, and had to get immediate fix. Um, um, that's what that line, if, if nothing happens in this year, that money will remain there. That's just for an emergency. Uh, that's why I'm asking that line, uh, $10,000. Um, and the... Uh, Lenny, uh, Lenny can I interject something there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, by all means. Um, in the current budget, you see there's $112,406. To date, none of that money has been spent yet. That is money for sidewalks that is our portion of Kelly Drive, um, the Booker Dairy Road sidewalks that were added, or Durwood Stevenson Parkway sidewalks now, um, as well as Market Street ranging from where the new bridge is supposed to go in into town. Um, so far, DOT has not uh, invoiced us for any of those yet. Obviously, the stuff on Market Street, the bridge hasn't even been started. Kelly Drive and uh, Derwood Stevenson Parkway are done, but we haven't taken over Kelly Drive yet. So um, until that happens, 
um, we'll carry that money over into next year so that we can um, uh, pay those invoices when DOT sends them to us. Thanks, Lenny. Uh, yes, sir, by all means. Mike, uh, that, that, Mike, that should cover everything, though, correct, the 112? Yes, that's exactly what we worked out in mm -hmm. our agreement with them for those three streets. Okay. So regardless the the length of time it may take, it, the the one twelve will be what what will be billed. That's correct. Okay, thank you, sir. Sorry, yeah. Lee. No. You're fine. Okay guys, moving down to the next line, uh this is the capital project line. This this is for the equity drive project. And to just kind of update on where we're at right now, um, 3D Solutions uh, is supposed to have the preliminary um, drawing for us by May the 15th, no later. We're hoping that we can get in a little bit sooner, uh, but as soon as we can get those, uh, the preliminary uh, drawing on that is when we can go out and we can start marking these drainage points. Uh, these are these are areas that are need to be identified before we can send out the RFP for the project. Um, as soon as we can, soon, like I said, as soon as that plan comes in, we've already got a template. All we've got to do is add those numbers in on the RFP that's ready to go, and at that point it will be submitted and, and sent out to contractors. And then we will run our ad on the project through state statutes. We have to run it for, I think, a couple of weeks. And uh, as soon as that's up, we'll, we'll get those bids in and hopefully, hopefully have the numbers on that project by the July uh, council meeting. Um, so that's where we're at on that project, waiting on the preliminaries. I'm, I'm assuming a lot of the holdup is because they got it in the latter part of February, and with the COVID-19, you know, people not really working. I'm, I'm assuming that's what the uh, backup on it was, but we were insure, uh, reassured that we would get that by May 15th, no later. That is correct, isn't it, manager? Yeah, that's correct. Um, I also wanted to mention that we're kind of monitoring the new True Hotel that's wanting to go out there on Equity Drive. Um, when that hotel goes in, they're going to need to run service across Equity Drive. So we're working with them to make sure that we don't do this road and put it all in and then tear up a portion of it all the way across in order to put in utilities for the new hotel. So that's possible that that could push us back even a little bit further to make sure that we are not in a situation where we're tearing up a brand new road there. That is correct. That's a, that's a good point, Mike. I forgot that, that that was another thing that we were looking at, but um, that's pretty much the gist of it where we're at. The, the thing is we, we want a good project and, and, and in order to be able to get a good project, we have to rely on engineers and uh, and and get the get the math part of it. Once that math part's in there, I do resurfacing projects every year. Uh, Bill Bill is well knowledge in it. We won't have any problems with moving forward on on trying to get us a good good project. I'm just hoping and praying that we get good numbers. Uh, with it with you know everybody pretty much at a standstill. State's not really moving a lot. So hopefully we'll get a lot of interest in it and, and, and be able to get some really good numbers to be able to come in within our budget and have a good project out there. Um, that's pretty much it in the street division. As as the manager uh, uh, said, that the mini excavator was taken out of the budget and uh, I'll be happy to try to answer any questions. Yeah, for the for the council's purposes also in capital outlay there's ninety three thousand dollars in the current budget for enhanced lighting out on that I ninety five bridge project. We have the same situation there that we had with the sidewalks. Um, until they build that bridge, we were not going to be and put the lights in. We're not going to be paying that, so we'll be carrying that ninety three thousand dollars over into next year, anticipating that they'll hopefully get on that bridge and, and add the extra lighting for us. Okay, we can move on to page 25 then, unless there's any other questions. All right, 
we're moving on to the garage um, on page 25. Um, Lenny also asked for an additional mechanic position uh, here at a cost of $48,711 and a hot pressure washer at a cost of $10,000, neither of which are included in the budget at this time. And Lenny, you want to go ahead? Yes, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Scott. Um, in, in the uh, garage line item, this guy is phenomenal. I, I can't say it enough because it's a one-man show. He, he basically keeps up anywhere from 75 to 80, 80 vehicles that comes through that garage single-handedly. I mean, we utilize, like, like I mentioned earlier, um, we have to use the department as a whole, so we break the division walls, and some guys have to cross over to help him on non-route days and things such as that. When, when he's in projects where he, he just can't pick up something or needs the extra hands, we try to do our best, and we do really good at it. Um, to help him get through, um, but he he does really good. I mean, he maintains four backhoes, and I don't know how many other pieces of equipment in there. Um, he does the PM services on them. He does the repairs and um, tries to save the town a lot of money. And uh, he's just, I mean, I can't I can't brave on him enough. He, he's a really good kid, and and he was a good asset to the department. So uh, we have one. Uh, employee in that line, we did ask for an additional. Um, the council did give us a, a, a new lift uh, for, for the heavier vehicle, so we actually have two lifts in the garage. So if, if for some reason you guys find some money in the budget that, that you could grant that request for that, that uh, extra man in the garage, I mean, he wouldn't just be standing around. He would actually be helping out a lot. So, uh, But right now it's one employee, salaries for that. Overtime. Uh, fifteen hundred dollars. He he gets close to that because he has to work over. Matter of fact, tonight I had to warn him when he was coming by. You know, just kind of keep it down because I'm gonna be in the office presenting a, a budget. He's actually changing tires. He had to come in and get a a route vehicle that wasn't brought to his attention, uh, ready to go out on uh, the route for Thursday and for Friday upcoming. Um, so he 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 was actually working over. But we should be within. That, that amount, no problem. Um, we're managing as best we can, but I'm not asking for any increase there. Um, uh, auto retirement, everything. Telephone, $1,500, which covers uh, uh, some some for his, his telephone as well because he's out on the road. The guys have to contact him a lot uh, to do uh, road calls, tires, whatever it is out there. He has to be able to communicate with them and the parts stores um, to be able to get the parts in. Um, Utility line is status quo, uh, same amount. We should be well within that amount. Historically, we have not had any problems. We haven't added anything, so we should still remain uh, good in that line. Um, vehicle, um, excuse me, equipment and uh, maintenance and repairs. Uh, we spent six dollars and nineteen. I still keep a thousand dollars in there just for insurance in case something does break down, a lift or something that. You know, requires uh, an outside um, um, private contractor to come in. We'll have money to be able to offset that um, um, fuel. Um, it's one vehicle. We should be well within our our budget amount, especially with the price of fuel. Uh, vehicle uh, supplies and maintenance, um, three hundred dollars, and that's basically for maybe tires on his truck or if he has uh, the replace alternator or something. Um, it's nothing really major there. Supplies and operations, asking for the same amount. That covers a lot of his oils and, and things that he needs in there in order to be able to get his uh, uh, job done and be able to get the department's trucks out. Um, excuse me, I'm sorry for smacking everybody. Um, uniforms, uh, same amount, not looking at any increase there. And again, that does cover his safety boots and his. He ha his, his is a little bit higher than a normal employee because it's flame retardant. Um, you know, it's kind of like what the utility department's lines are. They have to have a little bit different type of material in case when he's welding or he, he's doing things such as that, if he catches on fire, um, it's a safety safety uh, precaution there for Dylan. Um, service contracts, $1,000, um, and that is for coming in and servicing some of the equipment in there, the compressors and things such as that, because we do get inspected. Uh, from time to time, and we have to make sure that we have the inspection tickets every year that you know our lift equipment's being inspected, and this is this is uh, being inspected. So that's what that that pretty much covers that. And 
things such as that. Um, in the capital outlay, again, we did ask for a hot water pressure uh, pressure washer. Um, Ten thousand dollars was expensive, but the way I was looking at it is not only can it be a used in the garage, he needs it to be able to clean the underneath of the vehicles and stuff because we go into landfills and we we go out in in, in muddy uh, pits and stuff to to, to drop our um, our loads and uh, all this stuff gets caked up with mud and things such as that. And if we have a busted hydraulic line, it, it's just it's terrible. You know, just getting in there trying to wash it off, it just it just won't do it. And that hot water pressure washer is uh, the one that I proposed in the budget that's not in is on a utility trailer. And I was looking at, you know, public works is exactly what we do. I mean, I can't say that we just do one thing. Uh, we do a lot. We work for the public. So if we have graffiti out somewhere or we have these things like that, it would be a very good tool to be able to assist the police department and the parts and rec department and places like that to be able to help get graffiti off and, and, and things such as that. So that's why I looked at getting a more expensive pressure washer because I felt like, you know, looking at the town as a whole, it would be a tremendous asset because each department would be able to benefit from it. You hook up to it, you haul it down the greenway or wherever you may need it to remove graffiti or what have you and, and then bring it right back and drop it off. So. Um, that's pretty much all I have in the garage. Like I said, it is 100% status quo, um, and I'll be happy to try to answer any questions. Lee? Yes, sir. Uh, so my question is, uh, you know, you want to add a new mechanic. The question is, uh, how much would you estimate the savings to the town would be to add a new mechanic? Because obviously there's you know, it's costing us something. Um, uh, so uh, yes, sir, uh, and and I'll try to answer that, uh, 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 Councilman Barber. Um, it, it would save money because uh, we could we could actually start service and doing PN services on on other departments. Right now, um, we could look at the possibility. I mean, I wouldn't say right now change it, but we could look at the possibility and start doing PM services for the police department. We could look at adding the fire department. You know, some of the stuff that doesn't require the certified guys to work on it, like the aerial type things. But Dylan could do tires, and he could do, you know, the the oil changes and things such as that. So they would save money in their line item by adding, you know, that in there. You know, and and then again, you know, say getting that extra pair of hands in there for, you know, day to day breakdowns. Because what happens when he's in the shop? And and we have a breakdown in any department. At that point, whatever he's working in in that in that shop, it has to stop and cease right then. He has to go out on in in, in the field on the service truck, and he has to dedicate 100% of his time right there to that that uh, emergency repair, wherever it may be. Uh, so it would be it would save a lot in time. It would save a lot of uh, time in in. Uh, money and PM services and stuff and other lines. It would be hard to give you a number right now, but it would be a savings uh, um, in a few years. Now, will we see that the first year? I very seriously doubt it. Um, but through the duration of it, you would see you would see a savings because a lot of stuff wouldn't have to be outsourced. We could we'd have more hands in there to be able to do more tasks. I hope I hope that answers your question. Yeah. So my, well, my my question is then. Uh, is it possible, and this is really, I guess, for, for you and for Mike, and the question would be is, uh, you know, to, to kind of look at justification, uh, again, cost savings is always one of the major justifications. Savings and quality and safety, uh, those are really the things, right? You know, savings, quality, safety, something like that. Well, safety is some first, really, most of the time, but, but you know, savings and quality is important, too. So the question is, is there a way to go back and look at, the, to talk with the other department heads who have uh, vehicles that have, like you said, maintenance that could be done by, uh, you know, by adding somebody to the garage if there's capacity in the garage to do the work. If you added somebody, you know, what, what could we take out of their budget to put into this budget to cover the $48,000? You see what I mean? I mean, if there's uh, a... Dave, absolutely. Dave, listen, absolutely. I'm sorry, Lee. This is Roger. In the police budget, <clears throat> I know you quit. I know you mentioned police car maintenance. 
2018, they spent 41972 Last year, 33.5.17. And this year, they asked for 86300 which has been the status quo. It, it kind of seems like last year as well. So just in in those two years, if you spend what we spent on 18 and 19, you'd have your savings in less than a year. I mean, if he, if this person could, if this person could make could do maintenance on the the vehicle because it says vehicle maintenance, repair for police vehicles, oil, tires, parts, etc. So um, that was, I, that's that's Roger. So my question is, I guess Keith is Keith here, and if he yeah. is, could he could 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 someone that uh, Lenny hires to do his garage work stuff do? Uh, not necessarily all of it, but a good portion of what you're having to uh, pay somebody else to do. Yes, sir. It, it could be it could be worked. Um, it did when I first started here. The town garage did all our maintenance. So you're saying that then that 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 you're saying then that if we had an extra person in the garage, that was that there's probably they could probably do all, most. Ninety percent of your maintenance you're already doing now, right? Possibly yes. Go ahead, Rob. Based on the comments, general maintenance he put in there was oil, tires, parts, etc. So, I mean, outside of any warranty work, or I'm not sure if it, if this person can do computer work. You know, I don't know how cars are getting so technical now with how digital they are, but uh, I think <clears throat> I think adding the mechanic would be beneficial uh, again, especially for that, because you can get them back quicker, I'm sure. Chief, uh, you probably have to schedule that maintenance thing, that car out of service that day, and you may not get it back for a couple of days. Is that correct? Most of the time with, with the ones that we – do work on they they do us pretty quick turnaround because they know we need our cars. Yep. Okay. Only if it's a big job do they usually keep it a day or two. Okay. Uh, Councilman Wood, uh, th- th- there would be a lot of things that we wouldn't be able to do because the 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 way that the com- computers and the vehicles are, you have to have that special program to be able to read that. But yeah, we would be able to do. Uh, the tires. We'll be able to do the brake jobs. We'll be able to do, uh, you know, windshield wiper things, headlights. I mean, just your PM service type things. We could save them money in in that line, and not only their their line, but we can save them in in some in the fire department. Some of their um, vehicles, like uh, the inspection vehicles, the SUVs, and the pickups and stuff such as that. Uh, so you would see a savings in in in, in, in some of those departments that would offset some of the cost. Um, unfortunately, you know, not 100% of what uh, uh, these garages do are uh, labor-driven. It is a, it, it is labor-driven a lot, but, you know, parts are going to cost too. Sure, sure, but, but the general maintenance of the vehicle could be possibly used by this person. Absolutely. Abso- absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's what, to. what 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 would be nice? What would be nice is that I mean, even if we only had the new guy in the garage, if we were blessed with that, you know, and that that's totally up to the council. If the council decides, hey, we don't want to go this route, we're still going to be able to operate. Um, but even if that new guy done nothing but PM services, and that's what he done every day, unless Dylan has to pull him off to help him on a a, a commercial vehicle. He would make a big difference in the department because the life of the vehicle is the PM uh, maintenance on it, changing the oils in it, you know, keeping those brakes uh, and, and, and those rotors turned and things such as that. That is the life of that, that vehicle. Right. Now, the Dylan, I'm assuming that's your mechanic's name. I, I, I've heard you refer to him as Dylan. Uh, does he do diesel? Do you see a diesel mechanic as well? Yes, sir. He is. He 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 does a majority of our diesel repair uh, up until when it's over his head. Um, he does yeah. pumps, hydraulic pumps. He does. Matter of fact, we just had a major transmission that went out on a uh, Allison transmission. 
um, we had to order from Charlotte. He jacked that thing up, and he 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 changed out that transmission between him and one of my sanitation garbage pullers. Well, you, you saved a lot of money right there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He he also saved uh, the parts and rec department a lot of money. I don't know exact what number it was, but when they had a um, uh, generator that broke down at the track, and and they got a a a, a, a high quote. From the company, those companies specialize in it, and you know they're they're like anything else. If they tell you they specialize in this or they have a special tool, you you might as well get ready because it's coming. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, but he did he, he saved them a lot of money by going in and working on their uh, I think it was radiator change out and some other things that you know uh, Cozy probably could excuse me Gary Johnson could co- probably reiterate when he he goes into his end, but they did he saved them a lot of money. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, sorry to hold the, the meeting up. I appreciate the answers to my questions. No, no sir. I, absolutely. Thank you. When it comes to Travis. Yes, sir. So I was thinking about that. If um, How often is um, – I know a lot of jobs that a shop may get may require two people, and that's taking a man off the street, so to speak, that you may have doing other tasks. So if you had this other mechanic, that would make that person more productive. Is that correct? Yes, sir, it would. It would. I mean, it's like anything else, councilman. I mean, you have to prioritize things. Am I going to say that this is more important than that? No, I'm not. Everything is important. You know, we're all here to provide a service to the citizens and, you know, do the best we can. But at at some points, you have to, you know, you have to stop something and, and it's an inconvenience there, just in order to be able to fix something, you know, because he may not be able to do it by himself. It could be a 500-pound part that he's trying to hold up. These cylinders that we have to put in uh, on our trash trucks or on our knuckle boom loaders, these things are really heavy, and it takes two guys. So we actually have to pull somebody off to go in there and work, you know, several hours. Today, uh, I, I had an employee, Abraham, he was in the garage all day, assistant Dylan with getting tires changed out and uh he was working on the uh trash truck. Mm-hmm. Okay, that helps. Thank you. Yes, sir. Lenny at one time y'all had more than one mechanic at the town garage if I'm not mistaken, is that correct? Yes, yes sir. Uh we did, uh Councilman Ray. We we actually had three. We have four bays and you know, in the future Smithfield's gonna grow. And and I have a vision to see that, you know, in, in the future we, we'll have a mechanic in each bay, kind of like what Sheriff Bizzle has. You know, he's got he's got these guys in, and they specialize in this, this, and this. These things come in, and it's like chain reacts, boom, 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 boom. Things things happen. Uh, but, yes, we did. We, ha- we had three mechanics at one time. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, through the years, economy and things like that, we, we kind of had to dilute these things down and, and get employees out in the field doing more things, and we relied on – you know, contracting you know out a lot of things and and uh, but we did yeah we had we had three employees. Thank you, Lena. I hope we can get another one back in your budget. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate that. I have one question then about your pressure washer, uh, high water pressure wash, hot water pressure washer. The uh, how much? So uh, I know you your guys travel all over the town, so. How much uh, graffiti do we have across town? Well, to be honest with you, it, uh, I don't I don't anticipate a lot this year with the graduation. Unfortunately for those kids, bless their heart. Uh, but usually every year, whatever year it is, graduation, they go stamping them, and uh, um, we we actually have to go out and 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 get the get the tags off of uh, a lot of things. They go out a lot. Um, would it be used every day? I'm not going to lie to you, no sir, it would not. But it would be a good tool um, to get in. The police department calls from time to time. They'll get some gang stuff that's tagged, and and they like to go ahead and get that thing, get those things taken out right to begin with because it's negative. So they want to go ahead and get out there and 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 do what they can. So it would be it would be utilized a lot. Uh, but you know, to tell you it would be a big big asset for that. No, I, I was just thinking of other other alternatives when I was looking at adding it in here, and that. It, that would just be a good, a good idea. So, so I asked. Uh, let me switch back over and ask Keith the question again. These guys out there, do you see a lot of 
graffiti, especially uh, like gang related and stuff like that in the town of Smithfield? It, it slowed down a whole lot. We don't um, during the winter months. It's not as bad, but as the summer picks up, we'll we'll have a few cases of it. Yes, sir. So, Lenny, what are we currently using to alleviate this problem? How are we currently using to clean it up? Uh, what what we're doing a lot of it. It, it all depends on what it's on, Councilman. Uh, if it's on the street, yes, if it's on the street, we'll black it out. We'll, we'll use like black traffic paint, and then what we do is try to just kind of paint over it and make it look like it's a utility cut there or something like that. Uh, or right. we may have to, we may have to rent a sandblaster or something to come in to sandblast it. Um, on on stop signs and things such as that, we use graffiti remover. The only problem with using that and 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 and, and the way that they make these things now for high intensity, um, it actually takes away the reflective reflectiveness of it at night. So when yeah. you're going, yeah. it's got a faded look to it. You know, when you use that graffiti it, uh, remover, it works a lot. But that hot water, you know, unless it's this crazy crazy amount of uh, pressure, you know, it's really not going to affect that sign and. Say it's the uh, the bridge there um, uh, going underneath the tunnel uh, here by our shop, and they tag that stuff. It would be excellent removing all those things. Right. So it's pretty labor intensive as, as the way it sounds currently. Uh, it it, it is. And this may help alleviate some of the labor costs tied to it, really. I mean, it wouldn't take as much labor to do this because is what you're saying it will remove it faster and easier oh yes sir and and that was the whole okay. that was the whole point of you know looking at one that's mounted to a trailer you know right. it, it wouldn't it wouldn't necessarily have to be my guys i mean it could be parks and rec if, if gary or channing or one of those guys needed one because you know they, they've got something somewhere on the greenway or, or one of their parks or whatever it is i don't know i mean i'm just throwing ideas out there, they could just come and look right. up to it, sign it out on an allocation form, they get it, they go out and they use it, you know, and then they just yeah. bring it back. Okay. Well, right. Hopefully we can find our way to make that happen as well. It sounds like it's a good, good viable option for us. So oh, I yeah. yeah. That. Yes, sir. I mean, the way I look at it is that it's, the equipment in the town is not any department's equipment. It is the town of Smithfield's equipment. It's the taxpayers' equipment, you know. Okay. So there's nothing there's nothing in our department if another department head needs it and we're not using it that we don't allow them to use it, you know. And this would Definitely. this wouldn't be any different. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. So, Mike, what I would ask as far as the the mechanic. Uh, I don't necessarily, I don't disagree with the possibility of adding one, but um, as Lenny said, we did have three, and I'm not exactly sure if it was cause of retirement, da da da, whatever it was. Um, we did use to service these vehicles, and um, now I know things have changed over the years. We've gotten some additional lifts, we've maybe gotten some additional equipment, but I do remember when we started to outsource this, the reasoning was because we didn't have the computer systems in place to do that. And also, if memory serves me correctly, the police department actually requested that we do, um, that it was actually cheaper for us to send this, uh, to the PM out. So I just want to make sure there was a reason why it went away, that if we're thinking about bringing it back, I don't disagree with it at all. We just need to look at it and make sure that we have all the facts in place before we just jump to do something. So that's just my ask. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll do some additional analysis on it and what we could look at for any kind of uh, savings and be able to present that to the council. Just just to follow up, tag on uh, to uh, the mayor's point. That's what I was asking too. Is if there's a way you can look at the uh, other people's maintenance budget and see what they're spending money on in those areas that could be done in-house, you know, what what monies there could be pulled out of their budget to make up the $48,000 of what is being done in here. You know, so again, safety, quality, or savings. That's what we're looking for, right? Safety, quality, or savings. I mean, 
if it doesn't end, if it doesn't hit one of those three things, then it's just nice to have, and you know, so safety, quality, and savings. That's what we're looking for. Yes, sir, Councilman. We'll we'll do that analysis and see if there's a possibility of reducing some of the other lines. Any other comments for the garage? Uh, hearing none, let's move on to page 27 for the Powell Bill comments. Lenny, you go ahead when you're ready. All right. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Man uh, manager. Uh, Powell Bill line is basically what it is. Uh, it was a really, really great idea by our present finance director, Greg, um, to be able to track our money that we get through the Powell Bill. And uh, on th this bottom dollar amount is 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 what we get and uh being able to do this at the end of the year we have to do a report and and show where this money goes and it's just easier to be able to track it when you have line items for for that money per se so um the uh equipment and maintenance a thousand dollars um that's the same as as last year um and that's for hoses and nozzles and things such as that on the street sweeper um that we've got that uh, is doing really well. Professional services, we have $500 in there. We're not going to use it. We just wanted to have that there in case in case we did. That money will go back into the Powell Bill Fund, and it'll be carried over to next year uh, if it's not utilized. Um, vehicle and maintenance, 3000 That is the PM services and things that we need for that street sweeper. Uh, that is like filters and all those things. We We try to do at least two or three PM services on it because it is on the road every day. Uh, the way that we do it now is usually the day after your route, wherever you live in Smithfield, I mean, we all live in, in the city limits, and say if my route is Thursday, my my uh, my sw uh, streets get swept on Thursday. Unfortunately, mine don't because I have a ditch in my front yard, but if you have curb and gutter and things such as that, uh, that street sweeper runs your route on that day. Um, so uh, that that's what uh, that's there for, um, supplies and operations. Uh, it's nine thousand um, dollars. You can see that um, we use that primarily uh, for things such as dirt road maintenance and things such as that um, uh, to be able to, to get the pile bill dirt streets up to par and scraped and things like that, uh, paths and and things such as that. Um, we're going to be well within that line. Drainage, it's thirteen thousand dollars there. If you look historically, we're not spending a lot of money there. That is there for insurance. So like when we we're on our projects now. We have 10 streets, and out of the 10, um, we, we have five that has to, has been milled. So when we go in and mill those roads, you know, in, in the past years, um, we, we really didn't know any better, and we paved over top of those gutter lines and things like, like that. We don't really know what we're going to get into. So when we mill those roads down, those gutters liable to be jacked all up, and, you know, water's not going to drain like it's supposed to. So that money is going to be used, some of it, to be able to fix those utility, um, those gutters and those curbs before we get in and pave it, because if we get in and open it up and something's uneven, we want to get them. We want to get them without water drains and not have to come back in and and uh, cut that road up. So, uh, hoping that that's going to be enough when we get in these things. Um, but that's that's a majority of what that that money's used for. Uh, drainage, um, that is for. Uh, um, well, that's that, that's what I meant. I think that's where we were just at, $13,000 was drainage. And some of it is to purchase some street sweeper brooms for uh, for the street sweeper. Those those pallets are running us about $3,700 a pallet, and we're going through, I think, I talked to my operator, we're going through about four pallets in a year. Um, and that's tremendous. I mean, the 15, 15 brooms per pallet, I mean, that, that just tells you you know how much that thing is being run and utilized, so we greatly appreciate that. I mean, I can, we can tell a difference in the curbs, you know, versus when we won't really run it because we had an older machine that was broke down, versus the way the curbs look now. Um, it just looks so much better. Um, contracts and 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 services. Uh, that is where the Beaver Control contract comes out of, and also it pays. Three thousand two hundred twenty-five dollars toward right-of-way maintenance uh, contract or mowing contract. That's what the the state will allow on right-of-way maintenance. So that's why that money's there. 
sidewalks and, and curbs, um, 20,000. Uh, that is for sidewalk repair. That falls within the uh, requirements in the uh, PAL bill. And then you have the $260,000 for the street resurfacing project. Uh, right now, uh, I'm sure every one of you are aware that the street resurfacing project has uh, started. Uh, the contractor came in on Wednesday the 29th. He's starting all of his full debt patching. And uh, then he'll uh, come in. What I'm doing a little different this year is, is I'm requiring them to mill the butt joints, and the butt joints is basically the transition areas from where the new asphalt is going to butt up to the older asphalt. In the years past, what we would do is just kind of overlay it. So it would kind of just overlay over the top of it, and it would just be a transition like that. And back when the material was not as rocky and, and things such as that, it worked really good. But now the, the asphalt material's got a little bit more rock in it, and the transition's just not as good. And I, I've noticed that it doesn't stick good. So I just looked into it. I got up with contractors, and, and they all suggested milling all of these butt joints. So that's what we're doing this year for the first time um, and hoping that those transition areas will stay solid. And when you cross over from older asphalt to new as asphalt, you won't have a hump there. It'll just be a good transition and smooth. That's pretty much uh, the, the PAL bill. But I will say that we are going to be uh, – in line as far as our time, and unless we have a lot more rain than we normally get, we should be well within our, our time frame. Uh, the contractor shot, shot the 1st of June being completed on, the, on our resurfacing project. He may be coming in a little bit earlier. It may be a week or so later, depending on weather, but right now we should be well within our, our budget physical year to have this project completed. Uh, any questions on Powell Bill? Mike, I do have a couple of questions. This is Travis. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Lenny, um, last year we chose, because we were getting behind on our street repair, to add additional funds to that. Did we get, can you give us a, a data how, if we got much further ahead because of that, and should we do that again? Uh, we, we did, uh, Councilman Scott. Um, um, we, we we got a we got a few more streets added to it, you know, and 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 the the streets are are actually getting paved, you know. But I mean, the, the problem is, is that we have so many bad streets in Smithfield, and and you know we're going through that uh, 2018 pavement uh, condition survey, and we're going from the worst down to the best. Um, if you throw more money in it, do we do we get more bang for a buck? Absolutely, absolutely, you do. It's always a good investment. I've actually had people contact me complaining about DOT doing sidewalk work on 301. They're thinking it's the town. Our sidewalk contractors are, are back in, in, in our areas, not on the DOT roads, but uh, complaining. We don't need to be throwing money on sidewalks. We need to be looking at getting money to get these streets uh, repaired in town. So, yeah, absolutely. Does it make a difference? It really does. I know several years ago uh, the mayor can contest. I mean, we were looking at paving like uh, maybe 10 to 12 streets a year, you know, with our power bill money, and they borrowed money. I think it was like $1.5 million, and we actually had, you know, uh, three $500,000 pours, and we got a lot more streets paved, you know, at that time. Um, so absolutely, do you get ahead? Yes, sir. And my other question, Lenny, is I know we had some trouble with the contractors last year. Um, is the new contractor doing well this year? Absolutely. <laughs> That's a good question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, I was about a year past my heart attack at that point, <laughs> and then that came in, and, man, that was a nightmare. You know, I started with the town in 1992, and, and, and Mr. Jimmy Clapp uh, uh, picked me up in the public works department around 94, 95, and that was the worst that I ever had, <laughs> and in and, and J.P. Edwards' uh, defense, they did come back in. He finally pulled that contractor out and got RDU paving in, and, and they done a really good job. But no, I am not going down that that route again. I'm out every day, every everything that they've touched so far, I'm out there. I've checked it, and I'm making sure that our full depth patches are five inches. I'm making sure our meal joints are right. The only the only problem I've had so far is is um. They didn't place any cones at, at a milled area, and, and some citizens wanted some kind of identification out. 
I went out to uh, Old Goldsboro Road today and placed cones. So it warns people, you know, hey, you're going to have an inch and a half drop off right here, you know. Uh, other than that, the communication's been good. They're contacting 911. They're they're directing traffic uh, well. Uh, I don't have any complaints right now. Lenny, I've got a question. Who owns uh, the Peden Road from the railroad tracks to Bright Leaf? I've heard it's the town, then I heard it was the state. Who who owns that? That that's the Department of Transportation. Okay. Do you know if they got in, <laughs> anything lined up to try to work on that by chance? Yes, we sir. Um, uh, we we got word, uh, and I, I think it may have been Derwood Stevenson that gave us the heads up that DOT is doing some projects close by, and they're looking at trying to add that uh, resurfacing project, you know, coming up in the very near future. I don't know how soon that is. Mike may, may can tell you, but uh, they were looking at trying to get that paid from there to the railroad track. Could we maybe send a letter to Derwood and where we're at on maybe by chance? Yeah, I, I can follow up with Derwood and see where we're at. Lenny's correct. He uh, he did contact us and let us know that they're planning on repaving that section of road for us. Um, a lot of complaints on that. I do. Yep. Not thank exactly you. sure what the timeline is yet. All right, thank you. Yeah. Um, our road conditions for the council's benefit is something that we've been looking at quite a bit. Um, one thing that the council could choose to do if it if it wanted to is we could take out a, a large loan and do a lot of streets at one time and use our pile bill money to make the debt service payment. Um, the only issue with that is it has to go through referendum so the people would have to vote on it if you wanted to do that. But that's something to to consider and think about if you wanted to do a large-scale project at one time. Uh, Councilman Scott, um, you also had a question about utility cuts. Do you still have a question about that? Yeah, I saw where in some of the capital outlay, there was a, one of the budget drafts, there was a proposal for uh, purchasing the paving equipment. I was wondering if it would be cost prohibitive to save money if we added that on. But after talking with uh, Mr. Branch and looking at it a little bit more detail, I think that that was probably not a good option. So um, he answered my question. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. If there's nothing further, we can move on to sanitation on page 28. Um, all requested items are included in the budget. Lenny, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ma uh, manager. In in the sanitation department, it is the heart and soul of public works. Um, uh, we have 16 total employees there. They're all break broken down into specific tasks. Uh, uh, we have uh, household uh, garbage pullers. Uh, we have uh, recycling curbside that comes out of here. We also have the superintendent's money. Uh, is in this line item, and uh, we have our yard waste crews. All these guys run routine routes every uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Wednesday is the uh, actual day we do our PM services on those, greasing them up, and then uh, tasks like trying to get them in, in each district doing litter sweeps and things such as that, trying to utilize them and then using them uh, in the grounds maintenance type uh, projects in the uh, growing season. These guys are hard, hard workers. I can't say that enough. They work in extreme conditions, rain, sleet, or snow. There's no setting at the shop. There's none of that. These guys are out there every day. I tell them every safety meeting we have on Wednesdays that I am so proud of this group. And I would gladly put this group up against any municipality in this county or this state. Um, so going from there, uh, the salaries and wages, um, that is for those 16 employees. Um, we, we are utilizing a temporary employee right now. And we do have a vacancy. Uh, I had a, an employee that retired, I think it was Friday, actually. It was a big hit. He was a really, really good worker. So uh, we're looking at trying to get him replaced. Tim and I just interviewed one. Uh, yesterday, actually, and gave him a conditional offer, so we're hoping to get him in there and get that filled. 
um, over time, uh, these guys uh, come in. They assist during during um, uh, uh, storms. Uh, they come in special events. These are the guys that come in, kind of like you know when when uh, uh, the New Year's Eve. You see New York. They have their big thing and. Uh, they don't show those guys that come in and have to clean up all that graffiti and all that trash and all that stuff that, you know, the the uh, citizens got to go out and enjoy. These guys do. They come in after the Christmas parades. They come in after events, the Ham and Yam Festival. They dump the garbage. They deliver vent cans. These guys are phenomenal. So that's where that uh, $7,000 is there. Um, sometimes it may go up. It all depends on if we have an extreme con conditions, but we pretty much stay within our budget limit, and I feel safe that we'll be there uh, this year. Um, on down to temporary, I'm not asking for any money in a temporary line. I'm hoping to have that position filled uh, before July 1st. I'm grooming a guy in there. We're, we're we're trying him out in different areas and cross-training him and, and hoping to get him in shape where we can you know, uh, hire him, but if not, we'll look at going outside and, and getting another guy, but I'm not I don't I don't need any temporary labor money there, um, so we're good. Telephones, uh, twenty one hundred dollars. That that covers all of our uh, in house uh, phones and stuff that we have, and also it covers the superintendent cell phone that he has, Lawrence. Uh, he is mobile every day. Um, utilities, we're we're status quo, asking for the same amount. Equipment uh, and maintenance to uh, to the equipment and repairs, uh, we're asking for the same amount there. And when we say equipment, there usually it's the not the actual truck, but it's actual piece of equipment that that that's attached to it. Like whether it be the uh, back of the trash truck, or it be the knuckle boom loader bodies and the loaders and things such as that. That's what that money's used for. Um, uh, utility equipment, fuel. Um, we're looking at being able to stay right where we're at. They're they're the biggest diesel con consumer we've got in the town of Smithfield, um, but. We should be well within our budget amount. I mean, I'm projecting us to come in well under it this year. Um, vehicle maintenance and supplies, I'm asking to get a $2,000 increase because I'm projecting that we're going to be, you know, over budget this year. We've had some major, major repairs. Just like the, the transmission I talked about, I mean, that, that was close to five grand after we got into it. Then you have to flash these things. This, I mean, it, it, this, this equipment is very expensive when it breaks down. It's another one. Uh, when, when it breaks down, it's not $100. It's how many thousands of dollars it's going to cost to fix it. Um, so I'm asking for $2,000 increase to be able to offset that a little bit. Um, supplies and operations, asking for the same amount. They they use that line for a catch-all for you know, um, roll out trash cans and uh, trash can notices, cleaners, and all those things those guys need out there, you know, sanitizers in the trucks and things that they need to be able to get through their day and their routes. Uh, uniforms, uh, we're looking at the same amount, no need to increase or anything there, it should be fine. That does cover their safety shoes and, and all the things that it does in the other departments. Um, over in, in, on page 29, landfill fees. I'm going to throw, throw a little uh, number out to you guys that's going to it's going to blow your socks off. And i just seen it today. I got my bill. I, I don't even know if I've had a chance to tell my boss. And uh, Mr. Scott, I apologize. I'd like to try to inform you first if I didn't. But uh, looking at the numbers, um, this year, this month, these guys are averaging around a 400-ton mark of municipal household waste a month. This group, that ain't including yard waste. This is municipal household waste, and that is your trash cans and some C&D. And C&D is, is abbreviated for construction debris and chairs and things such as that. They went up from that average around 380. I use 400 for easy math. This month they picked up over 500 tons. 500 tons. And I, this is basically... Uh, a reflection, and I'm hoping <laughs> it's because there's so many more people at home now working from home that's blessed to be able to work from their home, so they're doing a lot of garage cleanup. They're cleaning out their garages, and they're, they're accumulating more garbage and things such as that. So if you go through the neighborhoods and you see on your route days and you see those rollouts pulled out to the road, you'll see a lot of them are full. A lot of them are full. They're not partially full. They're full. 
and uh, additional cans too. So I'm asking to increase that line to offset some of that cost. And we got a new subdivision going in East River. I'm praying to God that we have more subdivisions coming in. I want to see Smithfield grow, but I want to be prepared and be able to have enough money in that landfill fee um, to be able to cover that that cost. We get a lot of calls of people that move into Smithfield and they just rave about these guys. We do surveys. These guys finish in the top percentage every year of you know saying that they do they do a phenomenal job, a phenomenal job. Um, you put it out there, it's going to be picked up. No questions asked. We're going to get it. So they, they provide a excellent service, but I want to have the money in there to be able to offset, you know, the additional garbage. I have talked to uh, Rick Proctor, the, the director over the solid waste uh, in the landfills. They are not looking at increasing anything this year. The numbers are the same. I'm just looking at the increase in the volume that we're having and being able to try to have enough money there to offset that. So that's why I'm asking for that additional money in that line. Uh, in the service contracts, that is $2,500. We were at 2250 at the end of the year last year. That is that is for our My Fleet account. And at the end of last year, I found that we had $250 that wasn't budgeted, so I had to take it out of an operation line. I wanted to put all of that money into this service contract, and that way it reflects this is what our My Fleet is costing our, our group. That's why when uh, Chief Powell was talking about it the other night, I luckily had those numbers already crunched, and that is for 20 units. 20 units is like your plug and plays. You plug it into your computer system, and it talks to those tablets and the uh, uh, data that we need in order to be able to, all right, where's that truck at? You set a perimeter, you know, and you, you know where that truck is. You can set alert zones, okay? This is the zones that we're at. If our truck goes out of that zone, it sends an alert to that pad and saying, hey, you got truck blah, blah, blah. It's here. It's traveling at this speed. Uh, if that truck stops, you know where it stopped at. C customers call, and, you know, we get behind. You know, and they, they say, well, do you, you know when the mailman's coming, he comes to your house about the same time. Well, the garbage guy does too. So you pull your roll out, you know when that garbage guy's coming. We're coming. And if he's not there and they call in, they want to know where he's at, the superintendent can pull up because he's very, very knowledgeable on this. I mean, he is my go-to guy. Lawrence is a, he is, he's a whip on this. But he can tell exactly where he's at. Uh, yes, ma'am, my trucks are two blocks away. They should be there within the next hour. You know, we got held behind. We had a repair or whatever it is. Communicate. It's not to monitor our guys. It's more of communication, knowing where they're at, knowing where, they, where, where they're supposed to be. Those, those type of things, it's crucial. If they unplug it, it sends an alert that this unit's been unplugged. It'll tell you exactly where it is. So we'll know when it was unplugged, and we'll know when it's plugged back in. So you can ask, hey, why was this unplugged on this time and this date? You know, so it's not just just for Big Brother monitoring them because I don't do that. It's more for communication and information. I want to be able to give the citizens what they want when they call in and say, hey, you know, I didn't I didn't get my garbage out, or they want to give an excuse. I stop them. I say, look, you don't owe us an excuse. What is your address? We're going to pick your garbage up. My mom lives in the country. If she she doesn't get her roll out in time, waste management's not going to go pick it up. They're going to charge her extra to do it. The town of Smithfield provides that service. No questions asked. We get it. So, but that that's what that line is for. Um, you go down to uh, capital capital request. Uh, like the the manager uh, uh, mentioned earlier, the eighty thousand dollars is is to cover. The, the the other 50% on getting that new knuckle boom loader. Right now I've got one in the yard that's got a cracked chassis. I won't allow my guys to use it. It's not safe. So it's parked in the yard. It's going to replace that one. And then the oldest one in the fleet will fall out as a backup truck, and this new truck will go into that rotation. We need three. And the reason we need three is because the landfill monitors and 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 they uh, they make us separate these items. We can't we can't have uh, yard waste mixed with C and D construction debris. It has to be separated. So I got two yard waste trucks that comes through picking up yard waste in the neighborhoods, and I got a C and D truck that comes through the neighborhoods picking up all the C and D chairs, tables, you know, boxes, whatever it is that goes into that C D C and D truck. Once that truck's finished, 
he finishes his route, he comes back in, he assists the yard waste crew with the route, and they, they come out. That's the reason that we have three out there running. Uh, and it takes it because these guys pick up around 150 tons of yard waste a month. So um, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, anything that you guys can do for Public Works, it will be greatly appreciated. Like I said, these employees, is they are awesome. They're awesome guys. They're hard workers, and they deserve everything they can get. Um, they need the equipment. I'm trying to get the equipment in, and we need to upgrade. But um, anything that you guys can do and you see necessary is greatly appreciated. Uh, and I'm sorry for babbling on. I know you guys, y'all have a lot of stuff to do, and y'all have got Gary to go through. But I want to let you know we appreciate your support. We know that your job is extremely stressful, too. Um, we're just we're just asking that if anything that you guys can do for us, you know, it would be greatly appreciated. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Hey, Lenny, this is Marlon. Um, I can definitely attest to how 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 hard them guys are out there working. Uh, I mean, I, I've seen them. I've been out there talking to them, and um, you just hit it in the last couple of statements that you had. Um, you know, they feel like they do need the equipment. You know, because some of the equipment is. You know, not properly working, and um, so I, I do attest to that. So um, just if it's going to make their job just a little easier, because it is hard. They outside in the cold and the hot. Uh, I definitely do attest to that. I just got one question um, for some of the contractors that are working in some of these houses, and they're not paying utility bills, but they're leaving trash on the side of the road. Now, it, really, your guys are not supposed to pick it up, then, right? Yes, sir, that's correct. We are not supposed to pick it up. So how how are we going to handle that? Because, um, of course, you know, open pine acres, and there's a couple of houses over there, uh, but, you know, they're leaving that debris. It's, it's right on the side of the road. And, of course, you know, the residents are calling me because, it, you know, it, it's not being picked up. So, I mean, who who's who's responsible for that? I mean, that, that that's what we're going to do, really. Yes, sir. Um, what 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 that what what happens usually there is we turn that over to code enforcement, um, but the guys are instructed not to get it. And 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 you know we we try we try to do the best we can. But sometimes these guys they get in the mode and 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 they get it. Um, but they have been asked to report that so we could we could pass that on to uh, to code enforcement so they could touch base with the contractor or or whomever. Gotcha. Okay. In reality, though. Uh, we shouldn't be, if it's a contractor putting it out there, regardless of whether the property has uh, utilities connected and are paying the fee, we shouldn't be picking it up anyway. Is that correct, Lenny? If it's yes, sir. A a a absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and, and we catch it a lot. We do. We catch it a lot. We, we've, we've had an incident on uh, uh, South 3rd Street, I believe it is, around the 700 block. They're, they're going in and 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 doing a lot of remodeling in it, and and it, it's just like anything else. I mean, if you do remodeling in your house, and you got a contractor in there, you need to get a construction dumpster out there. Whether you live in town or you live in the country, it doesn't matter. You know, that's a part of the construction phase, and we're trying to catch that and get it under control. Um, but that, that's what we're doing now. We're turning turning those things over to code enforcement and 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 trying trying to get it. We're still having a lot of illegal dumping. I mean, unfortunately. When 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 people come in at night, I caught them across the street from my house. Believe it or not, uh, they were dumping trash in front of a, a a vacant lot, and I went out there and stopped them. But it's 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 so hard to catch them, so hard to catch them. Uh, and unfortunately, when it's dumped off in a site like that and it's left, we're, we're stuck with getting it because we can't let it stay there for so long. I mean, nobody's there, so we we get it. But that, there is a lot of illegal dumping going on, and just like Councilman Lee said, uh, there's a lot of uh, construction going on, and, and we're trying our, our best to try to get it under control. But it takes a team effort. I mean, it really does. It takes a team effort, communication from, from staff, and, and us getting out. Lawrence does an excellent job, and I try to get out into the communities on every route and, and, and try to catch these tree contractors and people like that out there. My guys are taking pictures and sending it in. But, you know, and, and to be able to get it under control, it takes a group effort. And mm -hmm. I appreciate, you know, all the departments that help us. I appreciate the councilman that helps us. Um, but <clears throat> that's that's the battle that we face every day. So you're so the planning department, when they apply for permits, they will let you know 
Correct. Plenty. Uh, yes, sir. Usually they do. Um, any, anything that they see, they 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 communicate. Stephen and and uh, and his code staff. I mean, they have temporary staff that that we work a lot with, especially. You know, we're we're the guys that have to go in and and cut when 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 they find these lots that are are are, are not being maintained and they they issue their statements and things. In the end, you know, we're we're the guys that have to go in and cut it. You know. So the communication yeah. there is, is 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 pretty good, and 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 uh, we utilize them a lot. That's good. Well, tell your staff they do one hell of a job, and uh, I thank them, and uh, thank you for what you do. Those guys do work hard, uh, for sure. And it's a pleasurable sight to see them pick up every all the trash we do every week, and uh, you know. Those guys just, they make the town look better every day, so we appreciate it. Thank you, sir. We, we, I appreciate you guys. We appreciate everything. Just tell Rayford Twig to pull for the wolf pack. <laughs> you can forget <laughs> that. <laughs> hey, Lenny. Had to order some rakes for Rayford. Hey, Lenny. Yeah. Yes, sir. Hey, I was going to let you know, I was, last Thursday morning, Picking up trash on our road, the storm come through. I mean, that storm was blowing heavy duty rain, and those guys just kept going, picking it up. And then an announcement came across that there was a tornado warning or you know severe thunderstorm warning, and they stopped in front of my house and got in their cars, which is what they should have done. But I'm thinking, if it hadn't been for a, hadn't been for an official uh, severe warning, they'd have still been going down that street in that heavy storm. <laughs> Picking up trash. Those guys are absolutely awesome. I'm gonna tell you that much. I, I, I just you absolutely. I don't know if anybody works hard in our town and those guys do. They're. I just. I have nothing but good things to say about them. They're awesome. Uh, thank you so much. I agree a hundred percent. I agree a hundred percent. I tell these guys that you can you can ask any one of them. Uh, they they do a phenomenal job. Rain, sleet, or snow. You see them up there. No complaints. And and you you hear comments anybody can do this, yeah you, you're right you can you can get anybody to do a lot of tasks but can you get the dependability that these guys have, the coming in knowing it's going to rain knowing it's going to be an extremely long day, my these guys are out there on these routes until they're finished and if they don't finish they pick it up the next day and then jump on the other routes, no complaints, long hours they they're phenomenal I mean they really are phenomenal. But I, I appreciate that comment. I will let them know. Yeah, with that being said, I'm sure we do, but in their uniform fees, we do provide them proper rain gear. Yes, sir, we, we do. Okay, yes, sir, they get, sure. yes, sir, and, and their uniforms, uh, they're a little bit different than, than some of the other departments because they require different type things because of the sanitation things. The, the gloves are different. Uh, we we provide yeah. them with back back braces, and raincoats, and you know uh, uh, different things because they're in the elements every day. Yeah, I figure we did. I just want to make sure that that was uh, that was included. And if they need anything, we'd be more than welcome to oblige. <clears throat> so, all right. Well, thank you again. A- absolutely. Thank you. Any other questions for Lenny on any of these subjects? Okay, Lenny, thanks for everything you you did. Thanks for presenting. Yep. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. I appreciate the opportunity tonight, and I, and I really, really appreciate all you guys do as well. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on then to page 30 uh, to Parks and Recreation. Um, not included in the Parks and Recreation budget is $50,000 for the renovation of Burlington Park. Um, Gary, are you with us? Uh, yes, sir. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I'll let you go ahead and start on page 30. Thank you, Mayor and Council, for uh, allowing me to uh, present our budget tonight. Um, 
In the recreation budget, there's not a lot of change. It's pretty much a status quo uh, budget. We can go down line by line. The salaries are the same. The umpires and salaries uh, for part-time is the same. We don't know exactly what that's going to look like. Um, we could have athletics maybe like they have always been, or they may be more instructional and clinic and camp type settings, but those fees would come out of that as well. Um, Overtime is for tournaments and special events for our um, full-time staff when they work those. Uh, the FICA, the group insurance, the retiree supplemental, and the retirement is uh, just based on percentages. Um, temp agency labor, that is when um, in the summertime for 31 weeks we add a, a fourth person to help with the maintenance. We have not filled that as of yet because we're not playing any games or anything like that. So we're we um, are saving money as far as that goes. Our training and education um, for our, the conference that we go to each year and seminars and continuing ed courses. Uh, mileage reimbursement is for mileage for myself and other full-time employees that have to travel from facility to facility. Um, telephone is for cell phones for uh, our staff, myself, the athletic coordinator, um, and the maintenance supervisor, and there's also the um, information technology, our percentage that comes out of the town's um, expense for that. Utilities, there's no change. The equipment maintenance and repair, it, it looks big. There's a 22% increase. However, if you go over the service contracts, there is a 22% uh, decrease there, and what we're doing is we're moving money from the service contracts for additional landscaping work and we're putting it in the equipment maintenance and repair so it is not per se um, earmarked for that one contractor. If, if, if our contractor can't get to it or if there's something that he, he can't do, then we're, we're able to get that done by another contractor. And so that's why that was moved from there. Um, professional fees and dues uh, for the North Carolina Recreation and Parks Association. Um, there is a 6 increase for fuel for the vehicles. Um, that's based on historical data and historical usage. Um, no increase for vehicle supplies and maintenance. We are asking for 2,000 additional dollars um, for supplies and operations. Um, that is due to an increase in supplies, the, the, the cost of supplies over the last years. We haven't had an increase in, in many years. Um, we also have increased our facilities, the dog park and the uh, inclusion playground and the usage of that uh, with bags and, and paper towels and, and liners and that kind of thing. Um, and if we also are hoping to uh, replace our tent fences and a couple of uh, game mounds for our, our baseball fields. Um, special projects, those are that is designed for the Christmas parade and the daddy-daughter dance. And like Lenny had, that was a flow through and there's a revenue line item and the revenues for that, and they match up um, four thousand. Um, uniforms and that, and like I said, the service contracts. There's a decrease of twelve thousand ninety. So um, that is it, pretty much, for the um, parks and recreation budget. As far as the uh, capital outlay goes, there's some um, repairs that need to be done over at the Girl Scout hut. There hadn't been any repairs that I'm aware of. Major repairs. Um, over the last, gosh, 10 or 12 years. Um, the shelter over at Towton Park needs to be renovated. We need a new roof on the shelter at the community park. Um, we have a lawnmower replacement. We have one lawnmower that's about on its last leg, and, and um, we do still cut some of the fields that we uh, participate on. Um, John Deere Gator is a replacement for a 2008 model. Um, we also want to um, add parks ordinance and emergency action plan signs to our facilities. And uh, the EAP signs would tell people where they are, what to call the address, and that kind of thing. And then we are looking for office furniture for our full-time staff. Um, I have, we haven't had new office furniture since I've been here for the last 20 years. When the aquatic center was built, furnishings were left out, and so we got furniture from the state surplus store and from other places. Um, and so that is something that we would like to provide our staff is, is some, some office furniture.
Any questions on the recreation budget? Gary, it's Councilman Lee. Has Gary has Cedric's position been filled? Um, right now we have um, a temp. We have a we did hire a full time employee, and we have a temp um, that we're looking possibly to, to to move into that position. I know we'll have to advertise and that kind of thing, but but those three positions are filled right now. Gary, didn't you lose another employee, uh, Shannon? Uh, I guess before. we had had three. We had uh, Channing, Bernardo, and and Cedric Peanut. Um, yeah, Bernardo is the one I was referring to. Left too, and we have filled his position. Um, okay. Scott Fitter, yeah, he's so that those positions are filled. Okay. All right. Thank you. Move on to the aquatic center. Before you move on, Gary, could you just uh, take a second and discuss your recommendation for Burlington Park that wasn't in the budget? Um, yeah, right now we are recommending that we, we renovate Burlington Park. We need to do something with it. Um, I actually have had several phone calls asking about that park. Um, the, the, the equipment over there is really old. It's, it's been there since I've been here as well. Um, you know, as we grow, you hate to lose lose playgrounds and park facilities. Um, the community park is inundated with people, and it is full of another opportunity and another place to to um, play, especially now um, it's even more important uh, due to social distancing and that kind of thing when we open up playgrounds to, to alleviate some of the crowding. Our playgrounds stay slammed. So... But we were hoping that we could, could renovate that at some point in time. Gary, I'd also like to make a couple extra points, if I might. Yes, sir. Um, we, we recently bought the park property off Highway 210 uh, in West Smithfield. We don't have anything in this budget to, to, to uh, renovate that or to create the parks out there yet we figured that was going to be a much larger discussion than we would be having at the budget time um, we also have ideas for uh, additional trails and um, access in East Smithfield from where the new uh, um, splash park is going to go and Smith Collins Park leading over to uh, what is the pond that we own um, near the college. We'd like to renovate around that pond and, and make it a uh, destination point, maybe a fishing point for kids, um, uh, as well as add some trails over there. And we've got some ideas behind that also that's not included in this budget. But those are conversations that we want to have throughout the year because they're going to be a lot bigger than um, just being able to be included in the budget at this time. So just want to make sure everyone was aware we're still working on those. Any other questions for Gary on recreation? All right, if we'll go to page 33 on the SHRAC budget. Uh, again, all requested items are included in the SHRAC budget, uh, including a 50 cent salary increase for lifeguards in the part-time aquatics personnel line. So you'll see a small increase there. Gary, go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, this budget is, is very similar to the recreation budget. It's pretty much status quo. There's a few differences more than there was in the recreation budget. The salaries are, are pretty much the same. Um, front desk staff, playroom staff, facility supervision is the same. We are asking for a 50 cent raise right now. We're paying them at minimum wage. We have been paying them the same amount since 2009 when we opened. Um, these lifeguards, they work hard and they, they, they do a good job and they are an important part of, of what we do. Their, their primary focus is to keep our people safe when they're in the pool area. Um, and so we feel like it's warranted for the 50 cent raise to, to $8 an hour. Um, salaries and part-time for instructors are 81,000. Um, that hasn't changed. The, um, that is for group fitness instructor, 
group fitness instructors, our aquatics instructors, um, camp counselors, and staff for our day camps. Um, overtime is $1,000 for special events and, and that kind of thing, weekends that go over and beyond. Um, of course, the FICA group insurance retirement um, is a percentage. The temporary labor, that has gone down 47%. The, the school system is responsible for the custodial services within the school. And in the past, um, we have been responsible for the weekends. They have reworked their contract with their contractors, and they are now doing basic services like they always do on Saturdays and Sundays as well. So that has saved us. We, have had, we were having to pay for, for custodians to come in and do that. So that has helped out tremendously. Um, training and education, it's 2000 that's for the um, conferences and, and continuing education. Telephone is a uh, cell allowance for the, the track director and the aquatic supervisor. Um, utilities, there's no change in that. Generator and fuel maintenance, based on historical data, we'll be, be able to um, drop down $2,000 um, and still be within line. Um, equipment maintenance and repair, that has gone up. Um, a little bit, uh, the 2625. Part of that is because we're going to the uh, voice over phone system and that is going to be required by the Johnson County Board of Education or by the school system. Um, they monitor and take care of our phone system and they are no longer going to support that. It's no longer supported so they're requesting that we pay for half of the changeover um, and that is our portion and there's also when the um, League of Municipalities came in and did a liability assessment. They, they thought that we should add an additional camera uh, in, the, in the playroom and also a panic button um, at the front desk. So that the cost of those are in here as well. Um, supplies and operations has gone up $2,500. Um, most of that is for clay and supplies for our camps, uh, summer camps. Those have increased. Our pottery studio has really taken off. and. We purchased the clay because you have to use a certain kind of clay in our kiln and then we resell it. So you'll see some revenue increase um, for those clay sales in the uh, concessions line item. And it's sold as a point of sale just like drinks or whatever. Um, but you know there is some revenue, additional revenue for that, the selling of the clay. Um, aquatic supplies for the pool area, uh, that remains the same. Um, concessions and pro shop. Is the same advertising. We're increasing to five hundred dollars, increasing five hundred dollars, um, and that is to market and advertise the Shrack and all of our Parks and Rec programs and our booklets and that kind of thing. We're trying to increase our marketing and our availability. Uh, service contracts. We are going up um, to eighteen thousand dollars. A couple of years ago, we um, converted our software system. We our Original software system was very good on the back end on the accounting part and uh, the administrative part, but it was horrible on the front end for our front desk staff, concession staff, and that kind of thing. So we were trying to make it easier on them and go with Rec Desk. Uh, Rec Desk has allowed us to go online with registration for our Parks and Recreation Department, and it has been very good um, for our front desk staff and our front end users, but the back end is horrible as far as the accounting goes. When we made that switch, we were really wanting to go with club automation, but the expense of that was to where we couldn't afford it. Well, that company has now been bought by CSI, who we were originally with, and they offer the, the, the easier user interface and the, the ease of use and the, um, also the support on the back end that we had when we on our original software. So we're hoping to be able to make that move. Um, and then our merchant service fees are for our debit, our debit and credit card services on our, all our accounts, and uh, that, is, that remains the same. As far as capital outlay, we are looking to replace our fitness equipment. Generally, we have a four-year um, four lifespan on our equipment. This is actually the fifth year. Um, we're actually going, in, going into our sixth year onto the equipment. We've had it for five years, four years. And so um, we're asking for 114000 for that. We think that we're going to come in less than that. That is a, a, a quote that we got for budgeting purposes, but once we bid it out and quote it, uh, we feel like we're going to come in less than that. Um, the UV light rebuild in the swimming pool, each uh, the splash park and the uh, uh, competition pool have a UV light that helps with the filtration. It kills the bacteria prior to getting to the chlorine, so it stays on the 
on uh, the, the chemical cost as far as that goes, and they have to be rebuilt every two years. Um, we're a little bit beyond that, but we want to do that. I did find out tonight and got clarification that $7,000 is the total cost, so we can knock that down to 3500 in all actuality. So, um, and then we're looking for the banquet room replacement tables. Um, for the banquet room, the ones we have were original to the building in 2009, and they have uh, served their purpose, and they're worn out, and you know, they're chipped and broken and that kind of thing, and so we'd like to do that. And then in the group fitness room, we want to add some AV equipment so we can offer some virtual classes. Um, it, it's getting harder and harder to find instructors, so that will give us additional opportunities to offer some classes um, for some or some types of classes that we can't find instructors for that we can do them virtually. And that's a, that is a trend that is going across the industry um, nationwide, so we would like to, to be able to offer those as well. Any questions? Uh, Gary, I have a question for you. It might seem strange, but it's, it's tied into something that we had discussed the other day. Have, do you ever work with the library? Um, we have talked to them a little bit about some of the programs. We haven't programmed together um, that I'm aware of. I think Kristen has done some stuff with them, and, and Tiffany has, but we haven't had a like a a full program that we shared in. We do with the, the DSEC from time to time and some other departments from time to time, but I don't know that we have the library, but it's not a bad idea. I just said I know one of the things they were talking about was they because one of the requests that they were requesting it is just funding. One of their justifications was that they, they provide a lot of classes, a lot of workshops and stuff, and they talked about some of the things that, uh, quite frankly, a lot of us felt like that really, if they were going to, if our town wanted those, we should be using it to the SRAC. And that's what you guys, Parks Recreation, that's really what it should be. So I just, I didn't know if that's maybe something that you want to check into with them, you know, to make sure that they know that you guys can do those things that they're looking to do. They don't need to be doing it. We can do it. Absolutely. And we don't want that competition either, by the way. Mike. Mike, I do have a question. Go ahead. And this may be for Tim. I don't know if he's on tonight. But um, yeah. with the request for the AV stuff for the Shrek, could you guys potentially look at uh, using some of the PEG channel funds to help cover some of that for Gary? Tim, is that something you can answer? Uh, yes, if it if it's going to be a if we're going to use that area there for uh, anything that we would broadcast on the PEG channel, then certainly. Okay, I was so just, just curious. I know sometimes you're restricted. To... No, th there are not many restrictions to it, Councilman Scott. It it really just has to be. Um, something that we, we would use on the PEG channel. And, of course, anything we use on the PEG channel, we utilize through all of our social media as well. All right, that's just the idea. I want to throw out there for Gary if it helps. Sure. He and I can talk about that, certainly. I'd like to use that facility. Uh, it has open space, so uh, it would provide maybe more opportunities for us as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, Gary, I have one other question. Uh, you're talking about adding money to your advertising budget. My, my question is, have you thought about, uh, uh, because now that we have the four-lane roads and a lot more traffic that potentially goes through it, have you thought about electronic signage for the uh, Aquatic Center Community Park? Um, we have. We know that's a lot of expense. We'd love to have one. Um, I've not asked for one because of the expense. Uh, we do use the one at, at Town Hall a lot for our programs and that kind of thing. Um, I'm not opposed to it. I was just thinking, I'm thinking more, you know, especially as we, cause we, 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 we bring in a lot of, uh, uh, we bring a lot of events there in the community park and at the aquatic center. I know that right now things aren't going so well because of the, the restrictions, but I know you were telling us, you know, last year that, that, uh, for like swimming meets where you're, you're, you're packed full, you know, you can't have a book anymore. And, uh, you know, like we have, you know, have all kinds of um, ball tournaments and stuff like that throughout the summertime. I'm just saying, you know, how does people that might just want to stop and see, you know, these events, the spectators, the spectators are welcome to come to these events, 
you know, how do they even know about it if they, you know, that's what I'm saying is that if they had some type of way of notifying that what was going on, people can, you know, I'm just, I'm just curious about it. Okay. We'd love to put one out there. I'll check into them and um, uh, maybe in the future budgets we can. Or if y'all want to put one in now, I'll certainly take it now. <laughs> I think well, we have enough. <laughs> I, I mean, that would be nice to see, but in, in, the, in the Parks and Rec and the Strike Defense, they do a, a really good job on social media. Uh, and a lot of a lot of the members of the Aquatic Center share different events who like those pages. So, Carol, um, we'd like to see that. But currently, they do an excellent job of advertising events coming up. For sure, through social media. I, I would comment, Roger. I agree fully that they do a great job. What they have. My only question was people that aren't uh, necessarily involved in that, but are just you know, as people are traveling through the areas and looking at the town of Smithfield, look at stuff and see these events. And there's some type of thing that says because we we're going to get more and more traffic through that area as it continues to grow. And as we continue to, you know, it becomes more and more of a, a major thoroughfare. It's already a big thoroughfare, but even a major thoroughfare for us. It, it gives opportunities to, to give upcoming events. I don't, I'm not sure how we how we do something that we can provide something. I just something to look at. It's not in this budget. Just thought I would do yeah. Good idea. Gary, could you possibly talk to the school during the summer and use their billboard as we're going by? We may could do that. Yeah, I thought about that when, when Councilman Barber brought that up, that it's possible that we could get some information on the, school, the school's new sign, if that was possible. Well, obviously, that David you know, obviously during the school, here in school, we, that we will not want to infringe on that, on that privilege, but during the summer, I think that would be beneficial. Right. We can actually talk about Alan to do that. what he would allow us to do. Okay. That's a great idea. Well, the the pool staffing issue uh, definitely needs to be addressed and handled because, well, not staffing, but the pay. Because uh, these individuals have people's lives in their hands at all times. And 50 cents an hour is not a huge increase, but it definitely could be more competitive for those lifeguards. So uh, I would strongly consider the, or strongly encourage the council to approve that request because uh, if you've ever been at the track on a weekend, it's a, it's a lot of folks there on Saturdays and Sundays on that pool. And unfortunately, I have been part of a drowning, and it is not fun. Um, and it's, those people have a lot of, uh, responsibility and, uh, $8 an hour is not enough, but it, it will at least benefit them to some degree. Yeah, Chubbs, and to, and to continue on that, um, there's a lifeguard shortage, you know, across the state. There are some cities and some towns that are, that are offering pay significantly more than we are, which I don't suggest that, but they're having a hard time filling their lifeguards too. The, the advantage that we do have is that, you know, we are a year-round facility, and so these kids will have a job for 12 months as opposed to three, so that's an additional advantage, and that's one of our selling points, um, you know, so, but we would love to, like you say, they, they are responsible for the safety. They're some of the most important people in the building, and um, we would love to compensate them accordingly. I agree. Long overdue, in my opinion. Any other well, questions? Gary, to your staff at the Aquatic Center and the Parks and Recreation, you all do an excellent job keeping up with all the parks and events we have in the Aquatic Center. Uh, we we thank you for all of that, and please uh, express that to your employees as well. Thank you. I will do that. <laughs> I have one other question, Mr. Johnson. Yes, sir. Mr. Um, the um, the employees were uh, allowed to have 
access to the facility, has that caused any burden to you um, financially or in any way, and how well is that program going? Um, it's actually being used a lot. I think the majority of the uh, employees are, are taking advantage of it. Um, I was looking at our numbers today. Um, our revenues have increased this year, you know, a little bit from where we were last year at this point, you know, by about $16,000. Um, of course, there is a cost associated with it, but it hasn't, it hasn't created any additional expenses for us. Okay, thank you. I just was, was yeah, curious. It's a great that. program. I think the employees appreciate it, and a lot of them are taking advantage of it, and I think that's a good thing for the health and wellness of our staff. I agree. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other comments for the SHRAC? So, Mike, just one comment for me, um, just for transparency. Um, I don't, I don't really think that there's any conflict or that I actually need to disclose this, but just for transparency, my son has been a part-time lifeguard at the SHRAC. He is not, hasn't worked there since last summer, to my knowledge. But just FYI, I have not advocated for this, um, but. But he, he has worked as a part time lifeguard and may do so in the future just for transparency. Okay, well we we can leave him at seven fifty. <laughs> you have to take that up with him, sir. Uh, that would be fair. <laughs> he's, he, he's looking at me right now. <laughs> Not because of the mayor's son, but he is a a, a very good lifeguard and. Um, we were thrilled to have him, and we're always thrilled to get him back. So, it was a great job. All three of my girls did it, and they sure did deserve a raise, that's for sure. <laughs> Holly and Hope, they were good, too. There'll be no back pay, though, Steve. I'm sorry. All right, well, if um, we can move on to page 36 to the Sarah Yard Center. Um, well, we're talking about salary increases. There was a request to increase the part-time staff pay there from $9 to $10 an hour, um, which would be about $1,100 a year, and that is not in this budget. So, other than that, everything is included that was requested. Gary, you want to go ahead? Yeah, and we feel that that uh, increase is warranted as well. That's a lot of responsibility over at the Sarah Yard Center and the folks that we have over there. Um, do an excellent job and so you know it's more than just working at a front desk or whatever you're actually supervising a facility and you're supervising children so we feel like it's warranted for those people um, so we are requesting that um, of course the, the FICA is a, a percentage the electric the gas and the internet we are asking for a fifteen hundred dollar increase um, we have taken over the internet bill that we weren't paying originally in the past year's budgets, and so that's about a, right at $100 a month um, for that. Um, the building maintenance, you know, $5,000, that's for building maintenance and repairs, air conditions, anything that goes on within the building that, you know, plumbing issues and that kind of thing. Um, supplies and operations, those are for the supplies within the building and supplies for the events and the uh, programs that we put on there, and that is at 12000 And then the custodial services, uh, there's no change in that as well. We are asking in the um, capital outlay to pave the parking lot. Um, we had that in there last year and um, you know for obvious reasons it was um, cut and, and we understand that. We're hoping to be able to do that this year and then we also want to uh, paint the exterior of the building and the roof to, to spruce it up and to, to, to make it look better for, for the Sarah Yard Center and the Smith Collins Park. So. Any questions as far as the Sarah Yard Center goes? Yeah, sure. Uh, this is Councilman Lee. Uh, at what point are we going to talk about expanding the operations there? Uh, for everybody that probably don't know, uh, during the school time, it's only open from 3 to 6, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. It's nine hours. Um, at one point, we had a community police officer in there that, that sat in there um, pretty much um, during the daytime. Um, so I would just, you know, why wasn't some of them hours in the daytime used for some of the adults? I know on Mondays, um, Tiffany, 
um, host um, some young ladies. I know my mom goes to that little class, but at, at what point, by this being a community center, are we going to start expanding operations? Um, Councilman Lee, I am open to that, to, to the hours. It was, that was, those were the hours that were originally set by the council when we opened the building, and I am open to, to increasing those hours. If we don't want to increase the days, uh, Monday through Friday for the kids after school, I'm open to that. If we want to um, increase the Saturdays over the summer, we're open Monday through Friday during the summer, I'm open to that. Um, you know, whatever type funding that the council wants to provide, we will provide the the staffing to, to open that. So that's what it comes down to is the, the staffing. And I'm open to, you know, whatever the council. Well, we, we've been talking about, I've been hearing some of the other departments talking about some of their staffing, how they have shared duties or whatever. So if, if same way you can work in an aquatic center, I mean, what more? I mean, same way you can work in the Sarah Yard Center. I mean, I just, when you say staffing, I don't understand that because I know, People do share duties. I know there have been some people from the Quiet Center um, come over there. So, I mean, I'm just I'm just trying to get on the same page. No, as far as the staffing goes, the part-time staffing, so we try to, to staff that with a, a part-time person in the afternoons. Tiffany does a lot over there. Um, she probably spends half her time there, and she's also responsible for all the parks and rec programs that are not athletic-based and for special events. And, and um, she does an excellent job over there, but... As far as um, Tiffany, she, Tiffany is the best. I wish it was two of her. She's the best. I mean, I I do agree with that. Yes, sir. So you know, um, this what question are you you, uh, Go ahead. No, I'm I'm sorry. I thought you were through counseling. You get right ahead. I followed. I, I was just going to ask it. I I'll address this to either Mike Scott or um, T. Powell. Just uh, at, at what point? Or are we looking to get that community police officer in there? And then with some of the expenses, um, definitely come from the police department when we do. I'll, I'll leave that to Chief Powell to answer since the money is in the budget for that. Um, we will try to, we're, you know, as soon as we get staffing back up to where we can put a position in. And I know you're down. We're, right, I know you're down. We're, we're down seven. Um, so it, it's kind of right now we're stretched out, but is you know, hopefully in the next few months we'll we'll be a little closer to being able to get some positions filled. And and like I've told you, anytime you need anything with that, all you've got to do is let me know. We we do have a line item to help out with that. Um, so just let me know what you need. All right, I appreciate you, Chief. Gary, what are the summer hours of that facility? Summer hours are 12 to 5. Monday through? Through Friday. Nothing on Saturday? Nothing on Saturday. Okay. Summer hours really just June and July. So, I mean, it's, I mean you, you think about that, but then you go through a – I mean, the most time it probably need to be open is in the winter time, where it's cold and you can't be outside. So I mean, yeah, there's more hours in the summer, but it's only two months. But you, you're thinking of community, so not even necessarily just thinking about the kids. You think about the community, just trying to get people in there, um, you know, to to have activities or whatever. You know, it's a women's group going in there on Mondays. Well, why no guys ain't going in there on Tuesday? You know, some older men. So just, I mean. It's a community center for the community. Council, we'll look into that to see if, you know, what we can do to get that open an additional day or two days. Um, the, the, um, the staffing for the morning does come out of the um, Sarah Yard Center, but that doesn't mean that we can't offer some programs through Parks and Recreation at that center to come out of the Parks and Recreation budget. Um, Councilman Lee, this is uh, Mike. I got a question for you on this. If I might um, help me understand what hours you're you're recommending that this be open so that we can put together some type of budget projection uh, as to what the cost would be for everybody. Uh, well, my thing is, uh, I mean, especially like I'm just here again thinking. 
I mean, the school, the school days, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I mean, it's only open from three to six. I mean, you know, I mean, just that's just three days. Um, you know, now um, the fact that we've you know been doing the feeding down there, I thank y'all for having the building open uh, from from twelve to one. You know, now more people are actually hearing about the building. More people are, you know, they they see it. Um, you know. All the staff and don't have to be staff. If we can get volunteers in there, make them go through some whatever they need to do, um, you know, and there's more people who are willing to talk and willing to do um, some things that probably may not cost us. So I, but it, it has to be some availability, um, you know, by being open. That, that's, that's just my whole thing. It needs to be a conversation, not just a conversation. Oh, we're going to wait the budget time. we in budget now, but that, that building needs to be open. It just, it, I mean, we we can find it. it. Don't matter what the time is, but it needs to be open more than what it is, and utilized more than what it is. And there's a wealth of people coming from everywhere, north, south, east, and Smithfield, that are willing to help. But at some point, we need to have a conversation. We in budget, so I mean, just whatever we can do to um, to utilize the building. I mean, I don't know if it's ten to two. I mean, I, I don't know no hours, but it, it it needs to be utilized a little more than what it is. Do you do you believe that it would get utilized if it was open every day but Sunday during normal year? You know, Probably not. Well, the one year thing or... about that. No, one thing about really Saturday is a lot of kids are involved in all these sports and AAU and, and you know so I. I Saturday is probably probably not anyway, no, but okay. it's definitely okay. during the week. Okay. Well that, that, that helps me out a little bit. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Any other questions on the share yard sir? Okay, Mayor, if it's all right with you, um, since we have Gary on the line, I'd like to uh, move right into the fee schedule for the changes in Parks and Rec. Yes, that's fine, Mike. Okay, um, y'all should have received the fee schedule today um, with the changes or recommended changes. Um, first thing is the uh, Parks and Rec recommended changes which would be on the third page. Um, I'll give everybody a minute to, to get a hold of that. Gary, do you have it? Yes, sir, I do. Whenever you're ready. All right, does anybody not have it? All right, go ahead, Gary. Okay, uh, we're not asking for a lot of significant changes. We're just looking to clean it up a little bit. Uh, we're marking out the T-ball and adding it to our youth athletics with the baseball, girls softball, T-ball, soccer, volleyball, and cheerleading. So we marked out T-ball and cheerleading as separate and put them all under one heading to try to clean it up a little bit. Um, our group tennis lessons, right now we do not have a, a tennis instructor. We don't do that. We kind of do that on a contract basis um, like we do some of our other programs, and so we have done away with that. Um, our athletics camps, we've become more involved with the registration and, and that kind of thing besides more than just providing the facility. That's kind of a, a contract deal with the coaches that do that as well, so we're asking for an additional um, Ten percent from the instructor, simply because of the amount of work that we're having to do um, for those camps. Um, we flip over two more pages over to the aquatic center. Uh, the monthly drafts and annual payment. We're doing the. We wanted to clarify. We've had some questions in the past. Ten percent discount if paid in full up front. Um, so we wanted to, to clarify that to make it where there's less questions for our, for our members. Um, the next page on the Johnson Community College student membership rates. Uh, when we first did that, there was a, you know, the, the community college was basically on a traditional schedule. Um, that has changed over time with the, the, the way education has changed. And so 
as opposed to a nine-month membership, we want to um, do that to a 12-month membership um, to make it easier and, and easier to, 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 to do those memberships. Um, the daycare, we're just changing the name to group rate and daycare pool rental. Uh, we have some, some groups that are just as big as daycares. They're not affiliated with daycares, but they may be day camps or other groups, and we want to offer them the same rate that we do the, the daycares in the summertime. Um, the swim meet rentals are, are the same. We just changed it per day to uh, four hours and eight hours because swim meets are generally um, run in, in four-hour increments or four-hour blocks, and so that would be more in line with, with the uh, swim, swim meets that we offer and that we uh, rent the pool out for. We have the Marlins of Raleigh and several other groups uh, that come in and, and do um, swim meets. Um, in the multi-purpose room for the birthday parties, um, we've just upped the number of guests up to 35 guests. That is the number of, of um, people that that room will hold based on the um, fire code, and we don't want to um, overdo that. Uh, John will get on us for that. Um, we did have 25 children, but then when you start adding, you know, 10, 12, 15 adults to go with that, it, it, it put us over the limit of, uh, of the room, so we wanted to clarify that as far as uh, how many are allowed in the room. Um, and then there's the, um, the, the deposit for the, um, the booking for the uh, birthday parties. Um, the uh, birthday pool parties for the um, 36 guests and above, we have to do those in the banquet room to, to, to get those um, to go through and to be within the fire code. And so those are the numbers for that. Uh, based on the number of people and the, the work that it takes to do that. Um, summer camps, we have gone up $10 for the residents and the non-residents. Uh, we are still um, less expensive than of any camp that I know of, but certainly most of the camps out there, and that's to help us recoup the cost on what it takes to, uh, to host those camps um, and puts us more in line. Um, the multi-purpose room is really not changing the fees. Well, the multi-purpose room it is. We don't rent that out a lot, but we rent it out for birthday parties and celebrations and that kind of thing. And if we're having a birthday party in that room for 125 but we were renting it for less than that, you know, $40, so people would rent it for $40 for uh, a birthday party um, per se. And so we just wanted to keep it in line with everything, the same amount, um, regardless if it was a birthday party or whatever it was for. Um, and then down there, the banquet room and the catering kitchen, we've gone from 65 hours to $85 an hour, which um, that sounds a lot, but also included that we were at 65, but then there was an additional $20 an hour custodial fee to go along with that. And so basically they were paying $85 anyway. This is just a way to clean that up. And then there will be an additional $40 custodial fee um, tacked on to how many hours, and that's for the hour of setup and the hour of teardown before and after a rental. And so that's it's basically we're charging the same amount. There's no increase. It's just a different way of of, of explaining it and to uh, try to um, create less confusion. Um, then there's a, a deposit of half the rental fee um, that is on this fund. Um, the Shrack Pottery Studio is a is a program that we offer that is separate from the track membership and we've we've called around and tried to um the other studios and we will we're way less what um what it has been so we're we're increasing that a little bit and that's 125 dollars for residents and 165 for non-residents and of course the um track members get a, a discount for that and they have to be actually your your potters that use the pottery studio have to, to attend a class um before they can use the, the pottery studio as far as um, during studio time, unsupervised studio time. And I think that is all the changes that we have. It's just more or less trying to clean up our fee structure as opposed to making a lot of changes. Any questions or feedback for, for Gary on those changes? Mike, I think there's one typo um, under the college student membership rate. It says $25 for nine months. I'm sure y'all would take that out, right? It would just be 12 months. Yeah, 
Yeah, that, there it says twenty five dollars per month or two twenty five for the nine month term. Yes, we'll take the the nine month term out. Well, yeah, yeah. The, and we'll take out the nine dollar annual amenities fees because we've done away with the amenities fees as well. I'm sorry about that for missing that. Oh, thank you. Thank you for catching it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'd like to keep going on the fee schedule and bring Ted in to go. Um, if you move in two more pages, um, you'll find the first changes in public utility services that are recommended. Ted, can you uh, start with that? <clears throat> yeah, so um, connection fee when the first two attempts are unsuccessful, we've been having to go out. I don't know, honestly, what is that one for? I think that may be a Greg one, to be honest with you, gentlemen. Uh, the, ne uh, the water meter set in the next page, I can get that one. That's the, uh, uh, we were ha we used to be $50, but it's been way low because the cost of the meter in and of itself um, is, is you know, we'd get some damage potentially, so it really is just cost of meter rather than $50. Um, so they that way they'll have the, the temporary meter. And of course, the the water rates and the sewer rates, that's all about the rate plan that the council adopted in 2016. Um, so we're matching those same percentage increase that uh, was adopted in the, this is now year five of our six year rates and the year five and six were going to be these rates. Um, and the sewer rates, we originally had it set, but as the manager indicated in the email and in this uh, uh, attachment that the county did indeed have a, a, a reduction of 44 cents uh, so we made the the rate increase per the recommendation and then subtracted the 44 cents per thousand gallons out of it again that way it's less of an increase so that's what the water and the sewer rates are all about uh, it's just sticking to the plan that was adopted in 2016 and that's the only thing there's no adjustment to the electrical or anything so Ted, the, I can go ahead, Mike. The Ted, the sewer rates then are are actually less than what was recommended in the 2016 study because of the decrease the county's doing. That is correct. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I interrupted. Um, yes, I can speak to the um, additional charge for having to go out multiple times to connect utility service. Um, we tell customers on the front end to make sure all the water in the home is off. Uh, because if the meter continues to spin, um, we turn it off, not knowing if there's a <coughs> faucet open or leak in the home. So after the first attempt, we make an appointment with the customer. If we go back out there and the customer does a no-show, uh, which means in terms we have to go out a third time. At that point, we're asking to charge the customer an additional fee. Okay, thanks, Greg. Uh -huh. And we have no changes in the electrical. Um, Mike, I have a question about the electrical, even though we haven't changed it. Sure, go ahead. We had discussed... Um, in prior council sessions for some of our residents that have harder times to have a prepaid um, rate structure. Um, have we had any inquiries about that and have we looked into doing that with the new meter system we have? Greg, have you uh, looked at that? Uh, we have not yet, Mike. Um, I think all the meters have to be in before that can take place. Um, but other than that, I'm not familiar enough with the AMI meters to speak to exactly how that works. Uh, there are a handful of towns that are doing that. Uh, customers prepay, uh, and they're able to monitor their usage, so they should know when they're about to run out. Uh, once the uh, money's put down, which equates the time, or kilowatts, 
have been used, mm-hmm. my understanding is the power automatically shuts off. But beyond yeah, I that, gives, I can't, can't speak to it. I think it gives them an alert, and they're allowed to, you know, catch it up. That way they're not faced with reconnection and all that stuff. I, I don't know. I just love something for us to look at as often an option to some of our customers that may need that. Sure. Well, where it would definitely benefit the town and potentially some customers is those customers would not have to put down a deposit. Right, exactly. And then in that, in that clause we could have if they have a good service, a uh, good payment service for, you know, 12 months and they could go off the prepaid plan. Um, one of the issues that Greg and I did have this conversation a while back, and, and one of the problems that we did encounter was that our utility bills have water, sewer, and electric all connected, and we're, we got a long ways to go to get our automatic metering done for our water um, and therefore our sewer. So it's, it's difficult to put them on a pay-as-you-go for just electric, and that, that was we weren't really sure how to do that when our bills aren't divided up that way. I understand. I just wanted us to keep it on the uh, on the radar and keep talking about it. I understand the concerns. Um, yeah. Mike, one other question I have um, related to power billing. Um, I know a lot of employees, uh, excuse me, not employees, uh, customers that are on the system are faced with financial burdens of when the due date is for their account. I know it's split on two. Is there any way we could work it out where they could select their due date or make it at the end of the month? Because a lot of them, you know, don't, their their pay, they're having to always pay the late fee because they're unable to budget to make it work when the bill comes due. Okay. Greg, can you speak to that? Um, I can tell you that, um, to my knowledge, uh, that is a software system limitation. Um that customers can't at random choose a due date. Um, yeah, we've been asked for we've been asked by customers to if that's an option for years, and uh, to my knowledge, currently that is not. A, well, if we extended the the late period, the the past due period, would that that potentially could help them? Is that something we could look at? I mean, if you look at our our fees, a lot of people are having to pay those late fees. Um, I, I don't know. I just, I've had several people ask me about it and I wanted to bring it up for discussion. Um, it may not be something we can change, but something we can look at for sure. Yeah, unfortunately, those that can afford it the least are the ones that get penalized. Um, but that just the setup is not just our system, but, uh, but all companies that charge late so just to make pay. Let me what let me you, take a look at it, Travis. I, I think I know exactly what you're talking about, and I've dealt with some of those people who've come in here, and we've we've worked out um, with them to forego some penalties so we can get them back on track. And it's been fairly successful. Once you get them back on track, they they tend to stay that way. So yeah, the, that's, that's exactly my concern. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Um, Mr. Mayor, that's uh, it for the budget presentations um, from what we have. And I guess we'd be prepared to start engaging in conversation about some of the larger items that the council brought up. Um, whether you want to do that tonight or you want to recess to another night or how you want to proceed from here is up to you. Okay. Um, I'm not I'm not sure about the rest, but I think I'm about done for tonight. Okay. Um, my suggestion would be at, that we do look for another night. Um, I'm just trying to look at the schedule right now. Sorry. Would we be able to have face-to-face discussion on the 18th for the rest of these topics? Travis, based on the governor's order, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to have 
everybody in the room at the same time. Um, we can have up to 10 in the room. That hasn't changed. Um, so we could have the council and Shannon and I, and we could have everybody else phone in, uh, but, that, but I wouldn't be able to have department heads in there without somebody leaving, unless you want to do it outside. Could we could we not try to execute a different type of uh, medium, uh, such as a WebEx or a Zoom or something, where we can see people and then everybody can talk more? And more. This this medium here does not work well for one person. You have to pause and wait and then see, and you sometimes step over people. Whereas if you're using WebEx or Zoom or something like that, you could have multiple people talking at the same time if you had to without having a uh, and you get to see people's expressions, so you're in the room to a certain extent with them. I mean, I've had, I had six WebEx meetings today, so um, I just, I think that if we can't meet in person, the other is at least, and I think, Andy, you do a lot of WebEx stuff, too. I just think, I think that's a little more personable where you can actually see people and, and more, you're more in actual the room with them in a way. And I was we are you recommending that for the next meeting? We we can likely we can likely put that together in a WebEx format if the council has the ability to use it. Mayor, I would prefer if we could get together the council and the manager and obviously the clerk and then have the department heads available um, to come in maybe one-on-one -on -one or whatever, and then we could do the conference call online for the citizens that would like to listen since they're not would, – we'd have a limit of occupancy. And I think it's important for us to meet face-to-face -face and to go over some of these topics. Yeah, I'm fine with that as long as we can work the logistics out. Um, I mean, we should be able maybe to have the department heads on standby and just, you know, bring them into the room as needed. Um, I think that's something that we should probably work out, Travis. So I'm, I'm definitely open for that. So um, I know, Mike, you said uh, I, I don't know how much time even, you know, I would hate to just hang our hat on the 18th, which was, I guess, when we have our other meeting. And, Mike, I know you – you had requested try not to do it Monday through Wednesday of next week. Um, I don't remember. Did people say on the 14th, the availability on the 14th, that Thursday? I'm available on the 14th. It don't have to be around 630, though, instead of 6 o'clock start time. I think that's fine. Uh, anyone else have a conflict on the 14th? Mike, does that date work for you? The 14th? Yeah, that that's fine, Mr. Mayor. I might. I'm a little concerned about having all of us in the council chambers. Um, I guess we'd be okay in there if it was just uh, 10 of us. And, and you're, you're thinking because of the social distancing? My, yes. Could, yes. Could we move it? I mean, could we move it to another, to, to the track or somewhere? Well, that's what I was thinking. The track, uh, even in the gymnasium, would be a much bigger space that we could spread out. Did you, yeah. did you I mean, see why, the way the county commissioners did it? When they did it, they had seven separate tables, and they staggered them uh, at the, the county commissioner's meeting. Had a, they did it at, uh, um, I think it was somewhere at JCC or something like that. But They did it at the library. Uh, that's right. They did a library. Yep, you're right. Are we talking about on the 14th or the 8th? 14th. 14th, Roger. Oh. I was confused. Sorry. The 14th at the track would work uh, and have the table spaced out. And I guess would we be able to have the phone for the citizens to call in? 
and you know, listen, obviously. That that, that shouldn't be a problem. We should still be able to handle a conference call. Okay. So why don't why don't we do this? If the fourteenth is good, why don't we um, plan on the fourteenth, and then Mike, you check in the locations. Is that possible, or do we need to determine a location tonight? Um, it's it's best to uh, set a location tonight. So otherwise, we have to have someone here directing people on the night of the the meeting. Okay. Do we know if the track's available um, on the 14th? Obviously, I think it's closed. Gary, would that be a problem? No, that won't be a problem at all. We can do it that night. And you uh, don't do it in the gym? Is that what you're saying, Travis? Uh, it doesn't matter. The conference room, if it's large enough for the proper distancing or the gym, is fine. Gary, what's your recommendation, sir? Uh, we have staff meetings in there that we social distance. This, uh, on this past Tuesday, where we got um, we had eight there, and we were able to social distance. Um, it'll be close. The, the gym would be better because you would have definitely enough room in the gym. But you know, if you want to do it, I had to make sure that we have telephone service in the gym. How would the echo with the phone work? Okay, Mayor, I have a question, if it's appropriate, um, for the clerk. Um, are these uh, calls? Highly attended. I mean, I think it's important for us to broadcast like we're doing. Other than department heads and the council, you currently have ten others listening. Okay, good. It's important for them, the people, to know that they can listen, and I'm glad they're there. Thank y'all for listening. All, all we would have to do is determine that we're going to have it at the Shrack, and we could determine the room um, based on staff once we get out there and figure out. If we just... Yeah. The other option uh, might possibly, I, I don't know if they're, of course, it may be about the same size as the council chambers, I don't know, but the training room at the fire department. I'm just thinking from an echo standpoint, from an acoustic, that might be better. Yeah, actually, that I think we could probably get 10 tables in there six feet apart if we staggered them out. Then maybe the department head should be in an office, you know, some of the offices or something there, if that's possible. Yeah, we could make them volunteers for the night. <laughs> Keep them at seven fifty an hour. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a better answer, Mayor. That's a good idea. So we're looking Thursday at six thirty at. The fire station. Do we uh, do we know? Uh, are there any meetings or anything? Is anybody aware? Is John on, is John available online? Do you want to make sure there's no fire department meeting or anything that night? Chief Chief Blanton, are you still here? Yes, I'm here, Mike. Um, that night would be available for us. There's not an issue with that. All right. We think that's an option. Why don't we plan on that, gentlemen? If nobody has objections, I'll make a motion that we uh, recess till the 14th at 6:30 um, at the uh, training facility at the firehouse. Second. I second. second. Okay. I've got a motion and a second to recess. All in favor, say aye. All in favor, say aye. aye. Uh, 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 uh. Any opposed? Any opposed? Okay, gentlemen, thank you okay, very much. Gentlemen, thank you very much. We'll stay in recess. We'll stay in recess.